themselves probably but we do see an interest being banned out by the side of brand esports like I said earlier on a lot of speculations and mr jim generally have a rather constricted hero pool all in all but we will be seeing a grace being picked up by the side of infamous yep and there's going to be that grace pick once again in the uh, pick slot as well for the side of Infamous. No surprise about that. It's a very similar draft to what we saw in that first matchup between J3X Inferno and Nebulae. I believe we saw the Glaive and Idris ban out, but uh, the Grace pickup, it's a good one, and I think that if not Grace, a lot of the time these teams will go for Lance at the moment, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's the return pick that the side of Bren Esports go for. And yep, there's the Lance coming through. Yep, I mean, there has been a lot of talk about the Lance that Guessing X can be placed on. But we saw a rather incredible shake-up or change-up yesterday between uh, Guessing X and Sync One. They are very flexible with this hero. They can just put each other on that hero and they will perform relatively well as well. And not surprisingly, Brand Esports will ban out the Celeste against that of Infamous. With the Celeste being banned out, maybe there's a slight chance that Sync One maybe would go for that weapon paddle. However, we saw weapon paddle being banned out twice from Impunity yesterday against Brand Esports, and Brand Esports still trumped them 2 to 0. So this time, down to Infamous, they might just want to ban out all the laners that Mr. Jim is very comfortable on. If not, then. You know, they should have just taken Lance for themselves. That is one thing that I was looking forward to, but Infamous actually picked up the Grace and not the Lance. So altogether, maybe they want to remove that box, but if they do, then Brandy Spots might just pick up the Baron, and that would be a very late-game scaling hero, and that might just give Infamous some sort of trouble. However, Baron is easily countered with very structured early-game aggression. Yep, so there's still a lot that the side of go with their second ban they are pretty deep into their bonus time and whether they're just thinking about it very hard and fully especially you did talk about that weapon power pedal being an option something you have to consider and be wary of but it looks like we will have to go for a draft reset and same pick should go through without doubt but yeah going into this second ban slot for the side of infamous there's just still too much to really I guess, have a guess on, and we now have to just wait and see what they pick. Uh, and with that, I think if we talk about what would be good to finish off the comps on either team, I mean, we've got Grace and Lance, who are both just very good, aggressive roamers, and there's so much that could work out with that. So it's still very much up in the air for either team. Well, definitely, with the Lance being picked up on Brandy Sports, they can really venture into looking into other heroes. I'm not surprised if they will pick up a Catherine for themselves just to put Sync One um, on that of Lance, and then they just have tremendous amount of CCs that can just put out and to just secure and help keep Mr. Jim on that laner role safe. But this time, once again, back to Infamous's ban, they have quite a variety of heroes they can just remove from the fold. And it's down to whether or not they will restrict the hero pool on Mr. Jim. If not, then remove the weapon paddle that posed quite a bit of challenge for the side uh, of um, Infamous in the previous time they actually met up. But they will ban out the sky quite surprisingly against that of Brand Esports. I'm not surprised if they will pick up the weapon paddle, but they will settle for that BF, the Black Feather, a rather flex coming out for the side of brand esports they can run him crystal or weapon but it's highly likely it will be a weapon black feather and for the side of jtrex or rather for the side of infamous they can just explore and we saw rather weird and interesting peculiar team comms coming out from infamous yesterday so i'm really looking forward as to how they will draft against a black feather scarf is probably out of the question at this point in time maybe they'll settle for castro to go up against a black feather if not like said maybe early game aggression comms can come through as well yes and if they don't pick up that scarf i wouldn't be surprised if i did any side to do it themselves uh, because the Scarf-Black-Feather-Lance combo could be quite effective indeed. And 
Right now, I'm wondering if they're just kicking themselves a bit for banning out that Sky because Sky actually can go quite well against Black Feather at times. There's a bit of a skill matchup there, but I'm sure Infamous confident enough in their abilities to do so. And now it's just the question. Rhyme is always a possible pickup for the side of Infamous. They are going to go for the Vox as their laner more than likely, which Vox uh, we've seen in the previous two matches uh, being played to great success, but... This is infamous we're talking about. They picked up the Arden, which means we're more we're probably going to see a CP Grace if I'm not mistaken. Well, it's either that or this Arden actually have got heavy hitter, um, the epic talent um, of Arden um, in this matchup. Else, we'll probably be seeing an on hit Grace um, with maybe a tension bow after shock pickup. That it's a lot of on hit burst damage just to counter. And I'm not surprised whatsoever to actually see uh, a, oh a pattern, which means which means we might actually be seeing a CP Fox coming out. And if that is the case, maybe Infamous have found their answer to this Petal pickup. Because as we were talking before stream even started, CP Vox, very, very niche hero, or rather very niche build path. And against a Petal works very, very well because of the resonant bounces. You can get onto Petal without actually hitting Petal. So that is one thing Infamous may be considering. And another pickup as well that Infamous can actually go for to counter this Petal would be Adagio as well. But Infamous, they are known to be playing the CP Adagio spaghetti on the CP Adagio. So all in all, I'm quite interested to see as to how this will work out because if it will be a CP box, then it will be the weapon grace. And that on hit, the, ben the benediction damage on a uh, tension bow into double tyrant's monocle, if not then a sorrow blade into double tyrant's monocle, um, grace will just hit like a truck and it will probably just remove Petal from the fold immediately, if not immediately. Yeah, but I wouldn't be surprised with uh, the side of uh, Bren Esports if they go for this weapon power pedal. That best... oh, 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 that's a bit of a sentence. Yeah, I mean, weapon power pedal, that is highly possible with a CP Black Feather in the jungle and weapon power pedal would just be in lane. And if that's the case, they the side of Infamous might just want to swap out or rather you know just change roles and we'll, we'll probably be seeing a cp box then yep and that's the thing it really is whether they will go for that cp or just weapon power that's just so much more meta and you talked about the on hit grace it's more so evil way because you are going for the tension bow and aftershock so you're going for a bit of both uh but we'll have to see as we go into this i mean in always uh the ones to surprise us and it looks like well we can't count too much on what they've signaled to us in terms of the lobby but we'll have to wait and see once they've started building items as to what they go for but with that as always let us know which team you guys are cheering for in the chat and yeah luxurio who is your team to win for this first matchup for me, honestly, if you were to ask me, I've been a staunch supporter of Infamous, so I hope Infamous actually wins this match. But Brand Esports definitely will have a chance after witnessing their, their performance coming up from yesterday. And we will be seeing a weapon graze, but it's still too early to say that yet because, I mean... For Chingy, he might just go for Tension Bolt Aftershock, the on-hit build. And for Spaghetti, it is quite, you know... Uh, not quite telling with the double swifty being picked up however spaghetti or they might just go for double weapon power that might work as well but we are seeing a very early aggression and we do see a very very early aggression brandy sports back but look we've gone the side of brand we have that weapon power pedal coming out once again but will it work against infamous is a question We'll just have to wait and see as Infamous pushing very deep into the enemy jungle. Will Brennan Sports let them get away with that? You see guests sing on this Lance needs to land these Impales and misses by Fink manages to... No, doesn't manage to actually steal away and is going to hand over first blood to the side of Infamous and they're going to be able to steal away the mid camp and the mid triad from the side 
of the brand esports. Yeah, we do see very, very aggressive maneuvers coming out from brand esports whenever they do settle for a battle. Battle just works very well in that early game. And generally, as Petal, you can kind of just trump over Chingy on that of Grace because Grace just do not quite have access to the back lines almost immediately. So that is one thing maybe Brand Esports were looking to do earlier on with that aggression that came out from them um, early on. But with this, Pagetti will be heading back into the lane and will be going up against Mr. Jim on this battle. And in the early game, like I said, <clears throat> Petal can put out a lot of damage and aggression, especially with those very, very irritating minions, uh, minions at least. And on top of that as well, the range on Petal SNK, though, popping that flash will keep him alive for just a tad longer. We see Chingy jumping into the fight with Benediction to secure another kill for the side of Infamous taking down that Petal. This is something that I kind of worry about. It is going to be very heavily on guessing on the early game, really protecting Mr. Jim up in that lane, because now with Grace being uh, on hit hero, it just, usually you've got Grace as a very aggressive roamer, but in this situation is going to be able to jump in and actually do quite a surprising amount of damage. Yep, Mr. Jim once again going back into lane as NK will be the next target, but Spaghetti is right back now. All the Manians pop with one Vanguard. And this is, in the early game, you can't quite say much because a weapon petal gets his, her spike works in a very um, weird or interesting manner, if I have to put it. Um, she's very good in the early game. She falls out in the mid game. And then once she gets all her three items, up four damage items, she, cuts, she starts coming back up into the game and can put out so much damage with that extended range on that. Um, on their basic attacks with the overdrive on trampoline as well. So this is one thing maybe infamous have to watch out for, but we will be seeing a CP or rather a weapon um, spaghetti. Uh, we weapon spaghetti sounds weird, but we'll be seeing a weapon box and a tension bow being picked up by Chingy. We will be expecting a lot of aggression coming into this early game. Yep, and you see infamous already put minion up to down and sync one funnily enough in the enemy jungle might be able to go for those backs as he spots them coming up on the mini map and is going to be able to take those away but meanwhile it looks like infamous going to be able to get that out of tree and, and then make their way back up to lane just in time to clear these minions before they push into turret but guessing going to be able to land the impale there's no follow-up however and i think this is where it comes into SNK, the pick onto Arden being very good for the side of Infamous because it really helps negate the amount of damage that Brand Esports can do when they catch them out with Impale and when even when Black Feather tries to jump onto any heroes. It's just a very good hero to have with that Vanguard uh, to jump in and save his allies. And we saw this before coming up from Infamous, but at the point in time, we actually saw Chingy going on to that utility clay, but this time Chingy just swapping it out and will be going for that weapon graze that I've been talking about. A lot of burst damage on those benedictions and of course your basic attacks as well. It, as long as, and you can stack it up with your tension bow proc with that benediction because it's considered basic attack. So all in all, it will work very well for infamous guessing X now, sync one as well, coming on to that lane, meaning candy pop they are and will be looking to push this turret. If not, then go down to just apply pressure in that of the jungle. Yep, so this is another thing of when whether it's being used to its full potential or not, but they are going to Crystal Sentry more than likely out of this, but uh, whether they're going to get out there alive is the question. SNK going low, Divine Intervention being used onto them, but Chingy needs to be careful now as tanky when they're not playing in that roam position. And now it looks like they're going to be diving in deep and actually managing to win this fight for, or hold out this fight for a fair amount of time. But in the end, Chingy will fall to the hands of Sync One on that Black Feather and pedal the gym being able to pick up a kill onto Spaghetti. So, I mean, they got an objective out of this. And if uh, the side of Infamous are looking to play this very early, especially going for a double weapon power build, it kind of sig signals that that's what they're looking to do and finish this out as soon as possible. It isn't a bad idea at all to go into the enemy jungle so early at five minutes on to take away some of these crystal sentries. And we know Infamous a lot of the time like to go and just completely eliminate them out from the time that they're even working on their second enemy turret. So 
Infamous is very smart at that and like to have that freedom to roam around the enemy jungle and it just helps push out and end games quickly and that's the thing that infamous are a team that's very good at doing that but right now we see them trading a bit of damage up in this lane returning their attention back here trying to push down a turret yeah but even then all three members of brand esports and infamous on this lane it is the calm before the storm and spaghetti will just clear lane no problem but back on my point earlier on is that we saw this coming up from infamous before spaghetti will be going for a lot of attack speed and will just be building up that breaking point stacks in a lot of team fights that will be happening in the late of game and but at a point in time Pato would be able to just outrange you in terms of the damage uh the attack range and it will be very very difficult to just jump on to Mr. Jim, especially with the pill that's coming out from gassing as we saw earlier on a very questionable movement coming out from infamous right there going for the crystal sentry and it kind of paid off because they got a sentry but that in turn gives two kills over to the side of brand esports Mr. Jim now oh Mr. Jim going very low Vince but wait for careful there's fountain available guessing and he's gonna put his dives Jim, but there could have been close tension proc still available for Chingy when they dive in, so it's a very dangerous game they're playing, but SNK is going to get caught out on them, hey, oh, no follow-up coming through by Bren Esports, they're just trying to hold on to their turret at this point, Chingy diving in and doing a lot of damage onto Mr. Jim, and likewise, it's just a lot of poke going around the table, but right now, Spaghetti going to be the target of Sync, but Sync won't going to fall first, because Spaghetti has that bre uh, breaking point, stacking up to seven, and managing to take out Mr. Jim as well. This is massive for Infamous as they're going to be able to push through onto that first turret. They did lose Spaghetti, however, in that fight. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Spaghetti who took out uh, Mr. Jim or perhaps it was Chingy, but they managed to win out that trade overall for the side of Infamous, just losing one person, managing to take out both the carries and get a turret for themselves. Yeah. Of course, Infamous would have preferred to do this sooner at seven minutes in would be nicer but this is where infamous need to go especially if they're playing with this double weapon comp they need to continue to push down these objectives because if they let it go on for too long i believe friend esports have a very good chance to bring this one back only needing to focus on one form of defense here yeah but i do see where chingy or rather the side of infamous is going with this team comp because with benediction and the basic attacks of grace it actually lands in a dome right it, it doesn't it isn't like one target it spreads out in a zone and that way chingy with one benediction can immediately just remove the monians forcing Pato to just respawn those monians and the seeds and that way just giving the side of infamous maybe a tap a tad more space to work with rather than having to cope with the monians as well as spaghetti going in building the breaking point stacks but we'll just back off Yes, overall it does look like a good uh, team that in together to go against Pedal, even if it is this weapon power Pedal that's more uh, relying on their basic attacks than their Munions, but as you said, it might just be that little bit more that Infamous need to win out the team fights overall. And uh, before we go anywhere else, while these teams are kind of just going around, regrouping, farming up and whatnot, because right now they've been so busy in the last few minutes, we did get an up match up between Nebulae and J3X Inferno uh, as they play their third match offline and Nebulae taking that 2-1. So congratulations to them. We will be seeing them in the final matchup against whoever wins here. And as for the third place matchup, whoever loses this match will be going up against J3X Inferno. But uh, this is only the first match between Infamous and Bren Chong, uh, Bren Esports. So they still have a fair while to go. Although we're 10 minutes in here, I'm sure things are going to start heating up as Chingy diving in. Yep, with that benediction. Oh, Ooh, God. And God. there's the gauntlet going down. The Jim, but it's going to be the trade hours. They're able to pick up a kill once a box. It now going to use the Rose Offensive to get out of there. Chingy going low needs to be careful not to get caught out on that impale when it happens. Sync one on the chase, but can they get there in time? Great use of the Giphian wall to stop them, and Chingy using that divine intervention on themselves, followed through with the Holy Nova. It might be enough to win it out, but Black Feather manages to get the kill and out of there as he manages to use the Fane of Heart onto a minion and escape with barely any help. So a great trade out for the side of Brenny's sports, but very, very close between both teams. 
Yep, and this is something that I'm talking about. If they prioritize all of their damages onto Mr. Jim, then they have to make sure that they have what it takes. They have everything to remove Sync 1 on this CP Black Feather as well. CP Black Feather usually want to build defenses after the Shattered Glass, and we do see a tier 2 defense item, or rather, a re oh, sorry, not reflex block, but a light armor onto Sync 1 on that you know and like you mentioned earlier on it is just so easy to counter a full weapon team they just have to build armor and just stack it all in all but this obviously gives chance to spaghetti just stack even further on that breaking point snk now being Ooh, caught off when you see snk taking down so much taking so much damage as well looking so strong they take spaghetti out instantly and i am gonna get taken out there's going to be the Divine Intervention, but it's not enough, and Chingy probably going to go down for the Ace. That's the double kill onto Mr. Jim, and Bren Esports managed to get out of that with everyone alive. A massive wave of Ace Stuff minions basically going to be able to take this turret and the gold mine. This is what Bren Esports needed, and it's really where I said I was worried for the side of Infamous, and that Bren Esports would be able to come back because Infamous are playing such a risky road of going double weapon power. And it is the fact that when you build that armor, you're just negating the effect that Spaghetti has with that breaking point. I mean, he's going to build less and less stacks as they get more armor, so... I, I really think that Brent Esports, uh, and although the team comp early on for the side of Infamous was working well against uh, Mr. Jim, we can see Mr. Jim just becoming that much more of a powerhouse on this weapon power pedal. And, I mean, it's such a Brent Esports thing that... I'm surprised they didn't ban it out. Instead, what was their second ban? Do you quite remember yeah. that? Sky. They actually removed Sky yes, from they, the they fight. Removed Sky, and I'm sorry to say, but Sky, at least in my eyes, and it is sad to say, is not that much of a threat. Especially when you're going up against Bren Esports, who can pull out such an amazing weapon power pedal. And you've got to give it over to the whole team of Bren Esports at this point, who are just playing it well to bring it back. Especially Sync 1 on this Black Feather, doing a great job of putting down the damage just with the Shattered Glass and the Broken Myth. It really seems to be enough for them to put themselves at free, uh, free kills, 1 death, and 5 assists. Yep, and honestly, if you were to ask me, I personally think that if... I mean, it worked well, her oh, SNK once again getting caught out. Yep, and we see them diving on to SNK. Guessing in there with them, and guessing not too sure where to turn to is gonna fall. He didn't want to... Oh, I don't think he had the Crucible available, using it for his teammates to get out of their life before he could himself is only going to be one kill traded over, so not the worst outcome for the side of Brandon Esports, but you can see that even after SNK went so low, he was able to just stick it out and clutch it out to get that Crucible down, uh, to get that Gauntlet down. And I think that's where we do see an Echo, or no, no, no Echo. I'm thinking maybe the first item was, but it looks like that's a potion, however. That yep. SNK, uh, at the moment, if he gets an Echo, I think that's where Infamous might be able to turn her around. If they're able to separate Bren Esports, I think they have a chance. Because right now, Bren Esports are just such a powerhouse as a team, and they need to be separated to really take them apart one by one. Yep, SNK once again getting caught out. Oh dear. Ooh, it could be a bit of a bait tactic. We'll have to... ...waiting that... Uh, they are making the rotation down to back so they did manage to push this lane up fairly far but you can see right now infamous just don't have what it takes to go for a full attempt on the turret as kraken is now on the fold and if they die doing so you know it could really cost them a lot more so right now the team's going to be a, a fear uh, a bit of a stalemate for now until they find ben x5 Yep, they will be. This is the, the usual calm before the storm, but Brandon Esports do not allow the calm to go on for too long. Maybe looking to go in. Yep, I, I'm sure Brandon Esports trying to bait out that gauntlet from Arden. As soon as that's used, they know that that's their chance to fight. Guessing constantly trying to land the impales, but needs to be careful to not lead Spaghetti towards them as he builds up those stacks. And Mr. Jim on the back line taking massive damage. 
through and missed the gym, managed to scale the gauntlet and just poke down Chingy, who had previously tried to dive onto them. Sync one using their own uh, block to get out of there and they're going to be able to do so, but whether they're going to go for the chase on Spaghetti, I don't think they can catch him out. I mean, Spaghetti has his own Sonic Zoom, SNK has the Vanguard to keep him out of danger. But for that, I mean, it's a fairly even trade once again. Both these teams, if anything, Bren Esports slightly ahead in the gold lead, seeing at 35.9k and Infamous slightly back at 34.3, so it's barely any difference at this point, and it just depends how the team fights break out. Yep, it will be down to how team fights break out, but I do understand where Ching is coming from or the set of Infamous is coming from. The 40% damage reduction that Grace offers with that Benediction. So whenever Grace Benediction in, she provides a directional shield of 40% in damage reduction for his and for her entire teammate for our entire team at least and I guess this is what that Spaghetti have to make use of and take advantage of and it will be this damage reduction but they will be taking Kraken now and it will lay oblivious to the side oh of Infamous. Oh my. Oh there's gonna be a flare coming. But it will gonna be too late. Whitefoot comes out and SNK in the middle of the fight doesn't have the gauntlet up for another five seconds as long as Brand Esports can run away from this one. They should be able to win that out. The objective that they were managed to take and they get the impale onto Spaghetti, but they need to be careful now. Oh my god, the damage going down on Chingy. Mr. Jim taking them down instantly and no one is checking him at the moment as he gets a double kill onto Spaghetti. Goes for the triple, but it's going to go to Sink One, the ace overall for the team of Bren Esports and they just took that against Infamous, a team that is just such a known powerhouse and it shows why Bren Esports is so strong at the moment and they're pushing through with this Kraken. They may even be able to end this one. Kraken's still so healthy and Bren Esports with so much damage, they're just tanking up this turret. They're going to push through the first base turret. Chingy is there, but going in alone is a very dangerous a uh, decision to make and Mr. Jim gain chased down by Spaghetti as long as Guessing can be there to save him. They do get the Giffen Wall onto SNK, but Spaghetti is still alive but only for a second. Mr. Jim so low on health manages to take them down and now it's all on to Chingy. He's gonna be up to find Sync One, but the Kraken finds the turret. Black Feather able to get the crystal before it's all over. And Bren Esports game the first game. Oh my, I would not be surprised if we see a pedal ban coming out from Infamous into the second match. Very good game, very well played coming out from Brand Esports Stan. Very shaky early game because of how pedal scales, like I mentioned earlier on, or rather very shaky mid game where, you know, where pedal still needs an item, still is looking to scale up and do not have that much of a damage. But when it comes down to late game, once pedal gets four of her items, and it's just very good game. That the game is almost set in stone after when Brand Esports or rather Mr. Jim on that paddle just able to get so farmed up and so healthy. And I don't think the double weapon comp will work against what Brand Esports is putting out. Only reason being it's so easy for a CP Black Feather to just counter you. And CP Black Feather is one of those heroes that wants to build defense anyways. Yep, so, I mean, no prizes there. Me, I going into that map. And when I saw that they picked up the pedal, I was quite certain that would be that weapon power pedal. You did talk about possible counter of whether Infamous would want to go for that CP box just so they could get the resonance damage, but it seemed like for at least the start of the game, they were clearing out those Munions a lot of the time, but you could see going down into late, it was more so that no one was even checking Pedal. They were just so focused on Black Feather, who was up in their faces, and Pedal was let uh, free for most of those fights, and just able to rain havoc and build up or just put down their own damage with the basic attacks they had. Yep, definitely. I mean, Petal has got such incredible range and in order to reach her, it's either you go for the weapon dash or the can burst her down in a couple of hits, like two, three, three, four basic attacks. That way you can just remove Petal very quickly from the early game for the early game fight and then just counter the other one afterwards. Grace, I understand where they are coming from. They can jump in, remove Petal, but Black Feather just being in Spaghetti's face, inching his face is just so difficult. 
for the side of Infamous to just work around the amount of CCs that Gassing is putting out as well. Yep. And with that, we will be uh, going into our next draft for the second game. So we won't keep you guys waiting any longer. Let's jump right on into that. This time, Bren Esports being on the blue side. And they're going to ban out Celeste instantly. And over on the red, we do have Infamous. The question is, are they going to ban the pedal? No, they go for the Idris. And now this is where I think pedal could be a possible second ban. But whether Bren Esports would take it as a first pick, I don't think so. I still believe there are too many meta heroes such as this Lance to pick up. And they're going to go with it again because guessing very comfortable on this Lance. I mean, both guessing and Sinkwan very comfortable on this Lance. And the Celeste ban out is not quite a surprise at all because Celeste just does so well against the Petal, your Helio Genesis. Petal tries to come in, you drop landmines all over, and you just blow them up, blow them up in Petal's faces. And it's a one trip. One way trip back to base for Petal, and thus the Celeste is being banned out for the side of Brand Esports every single game. And once again, we do see that Idris banned out and a Gray is being picked out by the side of Infamous. Yeah, and I do think we are still waiting for the ban to come through for the side of Infamous. They are having a bit of a think on this one. I mean, last time they went for the Sky Ban, which was maybe not so good, but they're going to go for the Kestrel Ban, leaving Petal still on the table. Do you think Infamous are just looking to counter this Petal this time? Or they might, I don't know, fall into the same trap? I mean, they can. They have got a lot of heroes to actually counter the Petal, but maybe the side of... Um, Brandy Sports would like to change things up and not just rely on the Petal. However, the set of Infamous now, they have they've got a pick. They can pick out Petal for themselves. And with one of the most reliable counters, like I mentioned early on, would be that of Celeste. And that's already taken out from the Petal or from the equation, mm. from the hero roster. But now we will be seeing a Glaive coming out. I'm not surprised if Infamous will just go back onto their own comp where it's just protect the box or protect the carry comp and just try their bestest to shred through whatever you know the side of brand esports will bring out in this particular draft well now it is the question of whether brand esports play back pedal especially going cc because really is what will shut down weapon power pedal if you're able to make them stop attacking well then you've basically stopped the powerhouse of, or the main source of power coming from that weapon power pedal. And it is something to note that the last time Glaive was actually a first ban, and uh, for good reason that Glaive has been picked up by Infamous, is very strong with the afterburn and just the damage he's able to put out once getting in there because weapon power Glaive is so strong at the moment. But as I saw the pedal come up, <laughs> weapon power pedal just came to mind, and Bren. Esports are going to play it with confidence once again, looking at a fairly similar comp to last time. However, they had to uh, ban out the Black Feather because they were on the blue side and they did not want to let that go over into the hands of Infamous because the CP Black Feather at the moment is also another one of those heroes that's just very strong. Well, definitely. It's either CP or Weapon Black Feather still very strong. However, the side of Brand Esports will lock in your Ooh. bay and that will be sky and it's just down to the side of infamous to try counter what brand esports is putting out at this point in time very very strong drafting uh prowess coming out from the side of brand esports the side the side i, I always used to say yes that grace and glaive should never be in the same team because they are so very strong but brand esports just so very comfortable just letting both g's get through and it's just down to whether or not their last pick. If they pick out that Taka, maybe it'll work. But they have to go up against a Petal as well. This is Scarf. Scarf is something I'm thinking about. But then again, maybe Chingy will be hyper-farming this Scarf right now on Spaghetti. And so hopefully Spaghetti can get items before Petal does. And that way, it just put out so much damage that the Munions can't survive. And with the Spitfire, can just go through to the back lines. But there's one thing to note as well. 
Scarf Spitfire do reduce damage the more things it passes. So it goes through lane minions, it does lesser damage, it goes through petal minions, it does less damage as well. This is one thing that sort of infamous have to think through, but with the sustain coming out and reaching it probably on that utility glaive, if not then a very economical glaive, budget glaive like you like to put it, then it might just work out, but priority will be petal. Yep, and uh, the priority and again on that weapon because right now we're looking at a more balanced team comp coming out from the side of Infamous. I mean, last time it was uh, quite off meta, if you could put it, anything. Uh, having that grace as a jungler and to go for the weapon power, not even the proc kind of grace is very interesting to see. It was quite strong, but just overall as a team, by going double weapon, they were at fault. This time they will have the weapon power and CP power as Glaive will be weapon and we'll see the obviously CP power, uh, the CP power, the crystal power, uh, Scarf. And so with at, that... At least, at least there is no Black Feather here, so CP power still sounds fine. <laughs> yeah, and with that, we do have uh, the side of Infamous, just they have a good team comp that with Glaive, you mentioned it before, could help out this Scarf by they want to help hyper carry them. And by doing so, I think Glaive is one of those heroes like Weapon Power Lance that can do just that and be very economical and very budget on their build and allow the carry to get that much more of their own farm. Of course, the ambient gold in the jungle has been increased recently, so it makes this kind of strategy that much more viable as the jungler will not get that far behind even if they're only getting ambient gold but it's not really something that the side of Bren Esports could do for Sky as Sky also needs her items more so than ever so I'm not too sure if that happens you're right that Infamous really will have the upper hand the advantage against Bren Esports but here we are loading into the second match and let us know, as always, which team you guys are cheering for. And with that, Luxuria, the same old question of who you are cheering for for this match. I know last game you said you're very much an infamous supporter. I'm a brand esports kind of guy. Is that still the case looking at the drafts here? Well, honestly, SNK going into the jungle of brand esports, trying to secure some fun for himself. Himself. Yep. Instead, it looks. Like they go, hey, oh, they did just pick up actually at work. Get them, they might be up to fight it out with Mr. Jim. Right now, they could even be buying time for the rest of Infamous, but it looks like a bit of a failed strategy. Yep. And SNK just going to run into the turrets there, end their life sooner so they can get back to the base quicker. And I'm not too sure about that strategy going into the backs. Well, honestly, looking at the drop this time, we have Sync One on the weapon petal and Mr. Jim on the CP Sky and placed in vain. And I guess the swap out is logical because what, you know, Mr. Jim don't want to face is Spaghetti in that lane and the Scarf that can just burn down the money so very quickly. That way, you know, when Sync One is on that petal, petal is up against that of Chingy and it will be a relatively easy time for the Petal Jesus farm up, get his items as well. Granted, you not get the items as fast as when you are placed in date, but all in all, it will be a, a logical put up or rather logical swap up coming up for the side of Brand Esports. But back to your question, I hope, like said, the infamous will have a one up pushing this into a game three. And mm. the only reason I think that way is because I think Infamous has got what it takes. Bren Chong has got a potential as well to close this series out 2 to all. There's no issues. I mean, they beat one of the powerhouses in Southeast Asia. They can definitely do it again in their own stride. So I'm not surprised if they do. But I hope because now at this point in time, Infamous is kind of the underdogs now. Mr. Jim. Ooh, now. Although Mr. Jim needs to be careful, does get and there's going to be Glaive picking up the return kill. And you can already see that what you said before about putting this Glaive and this Grace on the same team is such a dangerous idea to do. I mean, they, they allow it, essentially. They picked up the Lance first pick where they had Grace as an option, but it was more that comfort pick, I'd like to say, for guessing X. 
it is definitely a comfort pick. I mean, guessing X just plays so well on this gray so the, i mean on this uh LAN, so there is no reason whatsoever to just swap it out i mean if it's not broken why change it at all so and with lance as well there is a lot of cc's that lance can provide a lot of utility lance can provide going into games so i'm not surprised why they pick it up but all in all we are looking at a very 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 slow game they just need their items they just want their items for spaghetti now taking a couple of four barrage hits here and there, but all in all, it will be fine for both teams. Yep, looks like just a bit of early game. A uh, few first kills that went over, and uh, if we look in terms of early game, it's hard to say. I would almost give it to Infamous, just the CC they have, allowing them to get the kills with the Benediction into the Holy Nova that Grace has available to them, and then Chingy with the Afterburn. And then you've got even Count Out for Goop that can be used to slow down and really catch out the enemies. I think that Infamous have a better early game in this situation. And you talked about before on uh, the Weapon Power Pedal having a very interesting kind of power spike pattern. And I'm not sure how well it will work out against this enemy team who has this sky who they are deciding to hyper-carry with uh, 39 CS over to the 24 that Mr. Jim has at the moment. So, yeah, it, it will be tough for Brand Esports this match, to say the least. Yep, it will be relatively tough for a Brand Esports since, you know, Scarf can just remove Petal, get to the back lines in terms of the Spitfire on those Spitfires. So it will be difficult, but then we cannot quite count on Mr. Jim as well. Mr. Jim on this sky means that he can just slowly strike into the back lines, try the bestest to remove Spaghetti by guessing X though. Oh, oh Chingy. Hey, looking. Yep. Yeah. Oh, is sticking around, but Mr. Jim going to those backs to pick up, and I think this is what Brand Esports realized, that they're going to match the Sky with the Scarf at least a bit if they want to get into this game a bit more and survive through the mid-game, because Infamous putting down so much pressure on this turret right now. You can see Spaghetti on that back line just doing work onto the turret, putting Spitfires in, and then guessing, not able to find the Impales that they need, but I think even if they do at this point, Bren Esports can't really go in off the back of them. They don't have the early game damage like Infamous does. They don't indeed, and Chingy very patient with those afterburn, just looking for the right and the opportune moment for him to go in, but they will just hope to siege this turret. SNK goes in with a benediction of Chingy, there you go. Mr. Jim actually body blocking one of those Spitfires from hitting the turret, and there's going to be a death way in Mr. Jim land. Or barrage damage onto Spaghetti. <laughs> oh, the positioning right now from Bren trying to keep his tower alive, but they're going to have to back off as the minions push in and Chingy able to just go in there and pick it up with ease. And now, whether Infamous are going to be greedy is the question and go into the enemy jungle to steal away some farm. They are going to do so. Spaghetti needing that mid tree and able to get the healing and mana benefits from that. And they're now going to move their way onto Goldminer. They really aren't stopping with anything. And this looks a lot more like the Infamous we know. They get the kill, they get some objectives. And in this case, they didn't even get objectives. They simply pushed Bren Esports back, took their turret, took some farm, and they've gone and taken the mid camp as well. Yep, exactly. I mean, with one kill, you can quite achieve a lot. You don't really have to kill, kill, just scare your enemies down very very low and you can push pretty much you can pretty much push your advantage from there just capitalizing on how low they are if not then the amount of damage they do not have in this current early game because sync one on their weapon power petal you really need farm to get up to your first tornado trigger into your second one as well if you have those then you can definitely put out um, adequate damage but at this point in time sync one will just lack the damage snk being very, very outrageous now and just going in for an invade. Ooh, and this is infamous once again. Go um, it's more so helping them out in towards the late game. It's a bit of a, I guess, invest out the Crystal Century so early. And now we see that they're going to just have that much more freedom roaming into the enemy jungle after they've already taken turret. 
and of course with Crystal Sentry, going to come back in a few minutes, but I'm talking about especially into the real late game when they managed to eliminate it completely because Infamous is one of those teams that like to do that quite often as they just go for objectives after objectives and it's just real great objective control and what leads to the wins overall. Of course, Infamous overall is a team, very skilled players in that, but they just understand how the game works and how to win it out and finish these games. Yep, and Mr. Jim on this guy really needs to get all the items needed for Sky to just put out, you know, enough damage all in all. So at this point in time, we will see a rather slow farmy game, if you like to call it, rather than Infamous. Infamous, in fact, can just push their, you know, the advantage now, knowing that Sky requires quite an amount of farm, uh, quite an amount of items to actually put out enough damage, Infamous is playing very stale, very stagnated, just would not help the cause whatsoever. I mean, they have got their great power spike now. Spaghetti has got a Shattered Glass, Eve of Harvest and a Clockwork, whereas Mr. Jim on that Sky only has got their Broken Myth and Frostburn. This great time for Infamous to just push and push and push, but they do respect Brand Esports as a whole and do not want to go quite as aggressive as they can actually do. Ooh, but that might change up in just a second as we the Crystal Infusion Beam Spaghetti is on hold right now and Chingy picking up that tornado trigger. This could be what they were waiting for. Those spaghetti have that power spike earlier. So does Chingy now as they pick that up before Sync 1 even has their second item. And you can see how much behind Bren Esports are because previously, as you mentioned, when Spaghetti went to buy that clockwork was when Mr. Jim finished off their Broken Myth. So a whole item ahead of Mr. Jim at this point. And as you can see, Sync 1 with only 230 gold is still quite a far way off completing that Tornado Trigger themselves. And it looks like unless they have to go for the steal, Infamous are gonna be able to get that gold mine and now push away Bren Esports guessing needs to be careful and there's a lot of damage going down fountain forced to be used on the side of Bren before barrage doing a lot of damage meanwhile no one checking spaghetti spaghetti able to get some free shots and with the spitfires doesn't have a broken myth just yet so it's not going to be stacking up but still helps out in the long run is spaghetti going to jump in there with the afterburn game the kill getting the crystal sentry and it looks like they might even catch out guessing Oh, guessing not able to make the jump over the wall is in a bit of trouble, and he does it at the last second. Oh, very clutch at managing to not hand over another kill to the side of Infamous, but they're just going to go for that turret instead. They take it down instantly, and this is definitely looking a lot more like a general Infamous game that we see. Oh, that Impale missed. Ah. Uh... That Impale could have just caught Chingy out immediately and Mr. Jim going down very, very low. But it looks like the side of Infamous don't even... ...way Bren eats my own spaghetti just too strong at the moment, has n barely any, actually no defense at this point. Just going for that Shadow Glass Eve of Harvest uh, and the Clockwork building into the Broken Myth. And right now I think they can really rely on two factors. The fact that Brenny Esports really just aren't able to at the stage they're at. And the second fact that you've got Grace on your team with the Divine Intervention and you can really rely on that if the enemy ever does jump on you. Yep, definitely. And one thing as well is that we see this is very, very like Infamous all in all. They don't really need kills. They just need, they just know when to apply pressure and where to apply it. And they can just easily secure objectives for themselves. Unlike the previous game, in this game itself, 12 minutes in or close to 12 minutes in. Oh, another afterburn. Yep, and we do see up in lane inf just Spaghetti and Chingy right now. Looks like SNK now going to the fight as SNK jumping in with the benediction. Mr. Jim going very low. There's the dragon's breath being used and Chingy using the afterburn to pump them away, but Sync looks like he's going to fall and he does infamous picking up another kill and slow a gold lead as they now go in and they are trying to push for this anchor turret at only 12 minutes 20 in and it looks like they'll be able to do it. They have the damage available to them, but look at that. The return damage coming out by Chingy as he dives onto Sync 1 and they manage to get the turret anyway. Infamous just being so overwhelming at this point and really pushing towards that 10k gold lead. Now seeing at 32.8 over to the 34.3 and that's the sentry eliminated I believe already. 
Yep, that is the Sentry Eliminator. 12 minutes and 50 in. Not the fastest one. Um, according to records, uh, Vainglory records. I think the fastest was about 8 minutes and 30, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. But all in all, Infamous doing very well for themselves in this game. Inching ever so closer to the 10k gold lead that they generally would have against another team and brand new sports now they just really need to pull themselves together as a team to only find fights that they have got you know the advantage against mr jim now lacking seriously in farm and in damage as well spaghetti already has got four full damage items as compared to mr jim only having three granted you know mr jim you know, one set that early reflects block and thus not able to complete the items as soon as Spaghetti. But Infamous now just looking so strong, very, very strong. Their third gold miner this game. Yep, and that is going to push them up to 36k. So close now, trailing behind the or 6.8. But I'm looking at it as the fact that Infamous are aiming to get to 10k here ahead of the side of Brenny Sports and there's going to be the engage coming out by Infamous and Spaghetti going to be up to pick up that kill with the Dragon's Breath. Mr. Jim doing a great job with the death from above to push away Infamous but it's not going to be enough. They're still going to make work on this turret so early on for what you would consider to be a late game team comp. They're really trying to finish this early but Spaghetti already with four damage right it's so so deadly, they need to be careful, Mr. Jim, so low on health, and they're just working on their second turret now, guessing is back up on the fall, but Sink One will die before he even gets low on health, looks like he could go down any second now, Mr. Jim trying to position themselves behind Spaghetti, but the game is already over, it's infamous finishing that one, even before Kraken is on the fold, managing to get the triple kill just for style points at the end, the ace, 14 minutes, 51 in, GG, well played. GG, well played indeed. Six kills, 14 minutes in. People might think this is a very, very slow and boring match, but Infamous definitely just showing that they can apply pressure and they will not allow Brand Esports weapon Petal to actually scale up for the late game. And this is something that I've talked about and I was talking about as well. Sync or rather, Weapon Petal does it very well in the early game, falls off very very hard in the mid game and comes back super strong in the late game after he gets a four or three damage items and the side of infamous just did not allow that to happen push every F advantage they get and just push for the win just pre 15 minutes Very well played to Infamous right there. And although Mr. Jim definitely put up a good fight in that of lane, but all in all, it didn't quite matter because Spaghetti on that mage roll was just so very dominant in the laning phase itself, just disallowing Mr. Jim on that CP sky to farm up and get the items. But all in all, I must say, you know, I'm really looking forward because the next match will be the deciding factor as to who moves on into the finals to go up against Nebulae and who will go up into the third and fourth place playoff. And, you know, I request you know, what do you think? You know, Brandy Esports, they looked very strong yesterday. They looked very strong in the first game. But Infamous finally did find their footing in that or the second game. What would you expect coming into the third game? Hmm, well, it's hard to say. I mean, there's only so many uh, within your turn. And they did end up giving the uh, Grace and Glaive combo over to the side of Infamous. And I think that just proved how strong they were. Of course, they were able to pick up the Scarf to finish off their comp, which just, it made it so perfect for them because they hyper-carried the Scarf, who just had such good sieging potential. And I'm not really sure how you shut that down, especially with a team against Infamous, but we'll have to see if Brenny Sports have any idea of what they're going to do into this next draft as we jump into the final draft between the two teams, which is going to be the deciding factor of who moves on to the finals for week three. Yep, so I'm sure draft is ready. So without further ado, let's not keep anyone waiting. Let's jump in to the draft. Right, so coming into the draft, like you say, a lot of variables to think through, especially since now Infamous on the blue side and Brand Esports on that of Brand. Ooh, and there's going to be the line. 
from this infamous very target making they want guessing to be playing that now the question is what is going to be the first ban here coming out from the side of Brent Esports? Are they going to go for that Scarf or perhaps even that Grace that uh, we've seen being played to great success? Well, they can try to rule a, a mage out, I want to say, but they will just stick to the drop that they have been doing so far and that will be removing that Idris from gameplay. However, the side of Infamous will be sticking hard onto that Grace. That Divine Defension was working out so well for them. And the amount of slows and stunts, knockups that Grace can provide in a team fight is very, very important. And definitely will do well for Infamous if they do so want to go for a mage. But for the side of Brand Esports, I doubt they would like to go for that weapon battle again, seeing how it is so easily countered by a farm up blue icy dragon. But from the side of Brand Esports, we will be seeing the Black Feather coming back. Yep, and instead of banning out this Black Feather, going to them instead, and I think that's a very good idea. Uh, for the side of Brandy Esports, and they're going to ban out that Celeste. That means Scarf is still open on the table. But you know what? We could see a weapon power Black Feather, and possibly Brandy Esports go for the pickup on the Scarf as they are going to have the next pick after this ban. But there's the question what do you think? Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Ban I was going to ask you that, but they answered it for me. Two very targeted bans coming into this final matchup. They go for the Lance ban and they go for the Pedal ban to finish it off. And this could imply even more so why the side of Brand Esports uh, could go for that scarf. I mean, there's no need for them to go for pedal now because they can't. So, what do you think is going to be the answer? I don't think Brand Esports would really go for that scarf. It hasn't quite shown in their previous gameplay at all. If anything, they are giving a lot of thought into this all in all and they will settle for the Arden. Guessing X has played a quite a good Arden all in all. But I mean for me if you were to ask me Petal will not be picked up. I mean since Petal is banned out and the side of Brand Esports don't have a history of picking up Scarf, they will just open a last pick maybe to a Tarka to maybe just starve that of Scarf out if Infamous brings out this scarf and Tarka will be highly a pickup for Sync One. Sync One has worked very well with the Tarka, showed great performance as well when going up against Impunity yesterday, if I remember correctly. All in all. Yep, and with that, it is maybe more so for give that team by securing this art and pickup and it. We could always see a replay of the first match that they had, and Infamous could have taken that Arden away. So I think locking down that Arden, making sure they have a decent support, is also a good idea. Yep, definitely. I mean, with an Arden, you just boost mobility, and with that Gauntlet as well, a, a form of soft CC, unless, of course, you can land your Gauntlet on all three members of your enemy's team. But this time, Infamous really taking the time and will ultimately lock in the Grace and Glaive combination. And honestly, like I said, they should have just stopped the or remove the glaive out from infamous infamous just played so well on that glaive and this time we will see once again spaghetti going on to the cp adagio oh cp adagio making a i mean infamous have to and now we're going to see what brandy esports decide to go and reply to this because once again they have allowed the glaive and grace pick up for the side of Infamous. And it just goes so strong with so many laners. I'm not sure if Sky is the answer here. I really don't know. As much as I love it, I think that it's a good pick because going against this Grace and this uh, Glaive, even though you have this Surrey Strike available, it's only available so often. And then it means that uh, with so much CC coming out from the side of Infamous, if they manage to put Sky in a bad position, she's quite squishy indeed and is going to fall very quickly. <coughs> Unless we see a Weapon Power Sky, but I don't want that to happen. I want to see the CP Sky and the Weapon Power Black Feather pick. And I think then, yes, they have a decent comp. I'm just worried about how strong the comp is on Infamous. 
and how good of a team comp they've put together overall that just putting a CP Adagio in there just it works out well. He's got so much sustain in his kit and I'm sure Spaghetti can play him very well. Yep, and I mean... Yeah, I have to say that Infamous looking very strong for this third and final match between the two teams. Definitely, I must agree with you on that. With that, I mean, double sustain comp. It's either they can run Spaghetti on that Glaive and have Chingy on that Grace and of course have a roaming Adagio that can be aware as well. That way they just try their best to sustain Spaghetti on that of Glaive. They can just go into a 1v1 with that of Black Feather, can just quickly burst down the sky, or they can just have Spaghetti on that Adagio and Chingy on that Glaive that has never quite failed Infamous so far. A lot, a lot of pressure will be on Brand Esports this game as to whether or not they can just come out from their comfort petal zone and use heroes that are relatively more meta as compared to petal and just win Infamous with this because Infamous, they are kings of off meta picks they are very well oiled in terms of team synergy so this is one thing that brand esports will have to show as well and whether or not they will pull through and get to the finals is just down to this game yes it's down to this game indeed whichever team into the finals against nebulae so we'll have to wait and see obviously the losing team the third place matchup against j3x inferno so this fight, there's so much on the line for both of them, not just that first uh, to get into the finals, not just that opportunity, but for Infamous keeping their title as being one of the top teams and Bren wanting to make a name for themselves here. If they can beat Infamous, it's just going to say a lot about Bren Esports. They've gone up against them before, they've put up a good fight before, but they've just never been able to win it out. Yep, and that's one thing that maybe the set of uh, Brand Esports have to reconsider coming into this game. Infamous with a very aggressive maneuver will probably be catching Guessing out after burn in. Oh, and they do the after burn catching out Guessing. Uh, actually, picking up that Benedict first, it will be enough to slow them down, and they manage to get the first blood onto Adam before he, man before he can get back to the turret to save his own life. However, he will be back on the fold within a matter of seconds, but that's first blood going over very early and very unnecessarily to the side of Infamous, as Brand Esports could have avoided that. They should have known that Infamous, especially with this grace, like to play so aggressive in the early game with their rotations. Definitely, and a rather, I usually would see a, glaive, a Grace rather, if with uh, early game aggression maneuvers or movements coming out from Grace, usually pick out the Dragon Blood contract, but with the Iron Guard or rather the Protector contract coming out from Grace, means that she can supplement a form of health barrier to his teammates when the teammates are in engagement. That way it can help them sustain for a much longer time on top of the sustain that Adagio can already provide in this early game. Mr. Jim going up against this Adagio in lane will have a pretty difficult time, especially since Adagio has got much longer range as compared to him. And the burn as well will probably disrupt him and just mess a lot with his farming phase. Yep, it will indeed, especially with melee. But those minions, it definitely gives the advantage to the side of Infamous and more so Spaghetti on this Adagio. And we see once again Infamous with that rotation down into this jungle, being very aggressive, stealing a lot of farm away from this Sky. But Sky gonna take that opportunity to come up to lane, put down a bit of pressure on Spaghetti. Spaghetti able to dodge out the amount of the damage coming off of poor Barrage. And now Sync One having to rotate back to their jungle. Maybe they realize that Chingy could be back there. And Chingy just going to go back to base. I think, oh, no. They might, they might be able to steal away from these backs. But meanwhile, up in lane, a bit of poke going down. Spaghetti going fairly low. Protector's contract was used. And looking back over into... Oh, Sync One. I, maybe I able to catch Chingy out. To steal that one away. But um, yes, and back to the lane. So a fair bit going on all over the fold right now, Mr. Jim. Does get Spaghetti fairly low, but SNK is there to defend them for now. Mr. Gem stops the back by Spaghetti. It could be bait because SNK able to land the Holy Nova and guessing now going very low in return. This could be in favor of Infamous now, but Mr. Jim doing a good job at holding his ground. 
Yep, spaghetti as well, I must say. They started off pretty healthy. Oh, the amount of health barrier the guessing X can provide in this early game is just so much. And the minion candy popped once again for the side of brand eSports. Look at this Chingy coming up behind the rest of it. And on K, but get back the gym to push him up the and have to pick up Jim caught up in the Vanguard should be up stair like belly long goes down in the end and sink one I don't think able to finish off a kill in return so good job for Chingy rotating up behind them they're able to make it an even trade and keep their advantage for Chingy almost catching out no the damage coming out from Chingy so early on was enough to kill guessing Yep, and Spaghetti sitting on 2.7 thousand gold, really needs a shop soon, only have a Swifty and a first tier boots in his pocket right now. But all in all, Spaghetti is still contributing in the team fights with the sustain and the gift of fire that he can put out for his allies in this early game. But all in all, for in order for Spaghetti to actually put out a lot of pressure into lane, he really needs to shop and then just outpoke Mr. Jim in this laning phase. We all know Adagio just does so well in the early game. Only because of the amount of damage he can have with just one alternating current as compared to other carries out there. And a lot of his basic attacks, even built as CP, comes from his gift of comes from his B ability that buff on himself. So that is one thing that maybe Brand Esports have to take advantage of. And that is just a turtle up farm up for the late game because Sync Sync One and Mr. Jim just does so well in that of late game as compared to the early game. Yep, and we will have to fake him down. It, just judging from previous infamous matches, they will be able to take this turret by about seven to eight minutes if they continue to put the pressure down. Now, infamous, you know, seeing it three kills, that's a pretty good job. Meanwhile, Bren's still back at one, so it's nothing to frown upon. But there's the death from above, catches out Chingy and SNK. The thing is, Right now, Brand Esports in a bit of a similar situation to before. They just don't have the damage to respond to the opportunities they're given. Oh, Chingy comes in, probably looking for an afterburn. SNK taking two tart shots from there. Chingy walking very close, still holding on to that. Of there, as uh, we see Sync One pushing on to the lane with this Frostburn in hand. Is game ready to go on to Spaghetti, but Chingy is nearby and Wayne. There's going to be the Holy Nova does catch out Sync 1 and Mr. Jim very low on the front line is just going to have to fight for it. But Chingy with an amazing afterburn helps Spaghetti pick up that kill. And then now looking very strong, they should be able to uh, sustain this one out if they want to push for the tower. But realizing that Min is going to turn their attention elsewhere and just move down into the jungle. Yep, very well played coming out from Infamous there, very swiftly picking up three kills or rather three kills for themselves in that short time, although unable to push the turret yet. I mean, both Spaghetti and Chingy have to be in rather close range and they do not have quite had the damage over time like that. You know, of their mage, or if they're on a mage rolls, then, you know, mages just have got a better siege potential as compared to, say, this... Adagio or even Chingy on this glaive. But all in all, they will excel in team fights in this early game. Now Chingy is sitting at level 7, has the blood song for the extra sustain as well, maybe looking for an afterburn. Yeah, maybe indeed, as the minion in there gets caught out by the death from above, but the afterburn to escape once again. A very good engage and disengage mechanic for that hero, and it will be up in another 10 seconds for them. And Brand Esports, meanwhile, not really looking for a fight, just going to hold this turret and continue to farm up. And I think that's what's so important, as long as they can continue to do that and not let Infamous get too far ahead, they still have an opportunity for them into the mid to late game. Yep, and this is one thing maybe. I mean, all in all, I want to say that Brand Esports have got a better late game comp as compared to say Infamous and Spaghetti. I mean granted they have got an Adagio so that would make full sense. The problem now is that Brand Esports probably very very held back at this point in time and just just not looking to push or rather I, I'm sorry I, I mean Infamous is very held back at this point in time and just refusing to push their early game advantage. I mean Infamous 
Ooh, I'm not sure if it's refusing or respecting Granny's. A dangerous position for Sky to be in as they get taken down instantly. The Divine Intervention going to heal Spaghetti back up, so anything Mr. Jim did before is going to be uh, useless. Mr. Jim actually trying to get the minions at the back, so stopping the side of Infamous from pushing onto that tower. A very good technique, but whether they'll get caught out for it is the question. They don't have any Rose Offensives available, and guessing going to jump in there with the Vanguard to try to save them, but gets taken down instead, and they're both going to fall. Sky is up and the only one left to defend this turret though i don't think they can do it on their own they need to be careful to not get taken out themselves and hand over the ace chingy already working on stealing some farm away and this was the slip up you saw in that fight sink one just trying to get in there found themselves in the holy nova they got knocked up and meanwhile chingy was right next to that race a damage onto sink one take them out instantly and then they just turned their attention to protecting Spaghetti, who was being jumped on by Mr. Jim, and it just worked out so well for Infamous. Yep, and we saw the amount of damage that Spaghetti can put out onto Guessing X on that of Arden. Um, and Arden is the uh, dedicated Rome, the dedicated tank, all in all, and yes, Spaghetti can just put out so much damage. Oh, the amount of damage on Sync 1. Sync 1 going very low. Push this, and they are going paying attention but luckily it was whether Chingy's gonna go over that wall I wonder if he had the intention of doing so but no they're going to go for this crystal sentry a bit later than the previous games we have seen by them but still a fairly early crystal sentry overall after they've taken their first turret is a good idea for that to be the next objective is quite hard to push in yep definitely I mean crystal sentry and some farm is a bad idea Yep, I mean, after you take the first turret, generally half of the jungle quite belongs to you. You have got that roaming opportunity and you can just capitalize on the fact that, you know, the, the, your enemies cannot be anywhere near the first turret after you've taken it down. It is Spaghetti, though, looking to put some pressure onto Mr. Jim. Buffed himself up as well. Sync 1 goes in with the fort barrage, but just not connecting whatsoever. Infamous now being super patient with... Uh, they are engagers and understanding the power spikes that maybe Sync 1 has got now, but Infamous going in, pushing this wave in, probably trying to take the second turret out of Brent Esports' hands. Yep, oh, Mr. Jim going down instantly. This back on. Damn it. As, as SK uses the Divine Intervention to keep him alive, has the Echo available, so Divine Intervention up once again to help them push through this turret, but they don't even need it, they're going to be able to take it, and that Getting kills and take, taking so much away from taking... It really pushes them through to the win, slowly but surely... What's really, I think, the way to beat Essing, uh, Infamous is to even with them throughout the whole game, but it's such a tough thing to do. It's easier said than done, of course, or manage to get Kraken steals and turn it around late game with some spectacular comeback, but there's going to be no gold mine steal at this point, and SNK are going to be able to escape the grasps of Bren Esports, and we can see that lead starting to build up for the side of Infamous. I mean, they've already got nine kills over to one kill on the side of um, on the side of Brenny Esports, but when we look at the gold, there's that 30k over to 23.k. It's a fairly similar situation to last time, and if they win any more team fights and take any more objectives, they're definitely on their way to that 10k lead. Where I just think Infamous is unstoppable. Yep, I mean Infamous, so very comfortable on the respective heroes that they are on and they are playing on. So, you know, if Infamous do close this out and do not have a 10k gold, it will be oh, more pressure coming out from Infamous. Yep, Mr. Jim needing to be careful with... Infamous really want to anchor pressure as soon as possible, not letting Brand Esports get towards that late game. SNK jumping sync one, but Black Feather isn't here to help defend the turret. 
but it looks like Infamous might back out from that. Death from above was used, and there's the gauntlet coming down from Guessing. They're going for the fight, but Guessing in the middle of it will be not the first one to go down. They do manage to get Ching in, they manage to get Spaghetti. Bren with the turnaround. SNK going in with the stay alive as long as they can, but Bren Esports getting the ace and not losing anyone in it. If this was only a few minutes later, Bren Esports could have got a crack in from this, but we're still 13 minutes 20 in. I'm sure this is enough in their faces. They managed to get a turret and just getting that ace against Infamous must feel so good at this point where Infamous were in so much control of this game until then. Well, but honestly, if you don't ask me, I just need to say, and I will say it was because SNK was chilling by that brush there that allowed and just put Infamous, um, only Chingy and Spaghetti in the lane in the fight. Although SNK did come up with the divine intervention, but SNK was stuck at a gauntlet for quite a while before he actually entered the fight. And all in all, he wasn't part of the fight. He was only part of the fight, rather, after Chingy and Spaghetti went down very quickly in. And that is one thing that maybe Infamous have to work on, and maybe it's the synergy, and maybe communications as well, going into any team fights from now. They really cannot allow any more slip-ups from here on, because, I mean, look at Mr. Jim. Mr. Jim has got to suffer masks, Poison Shift, and Breaking Point going towards the defenses as well. And Sinkwan has got two items now, build up SNK, goes in with the Benediction. Yep, and does find Sync 1, but there's going to be the Vanguard. Safety of their base instead of trying to fight this on the side. Although uh, Gauntlet is up once again, they could force a fight. Death from above going to zone out the rest of Infamous, and I'm not sure if they're going to be looking for anything more. But no, they're just going to clear the way. There's going to be the Gauntlet. They managed to catch out Chingy on the edge of it, but it means Infamous still together overall as a team. And Mr. Jim taking so much damage from Spaghetti. There's going to be the Divine Intervention to heal Spaghetti right back up. And the Fountain used for the side of Bren Esports. Meanwhile, Infamous able to hold on to that Fountain. They get the Anchor Turret, and there's no Gauntlet on the side of Bren Esports. They don't have that Echo yet, so they're at a disadvantage if they choose to fight now. Yep. Ho oh, ho, oh, SNK oh, very, very it Looks low. like SNK going low, but that is only the Roma, and it is not the damage dealers as we see. Chingy going in instantly, picking up Mr. Jim in return, almost getting guess as well. Before that, when Infamous was split up, is definitely an opportunity for Granny Sports to win, and I think that's why, even with the luck and that we saw as an item pick up is a good supplementary pick because you have that gauntlet that can really split up those teams that work so well together and that is a lot of the factor there that even if it was infamous mistake for being mispositioned it's up to Arden to land those gauntlets to take advantage of that. I mean we saw the amount of damage Spaghetti has just went in, killed himself, slowed Arden up, buffed himself and landed three basic attacks and Arden is forced now just to back off, back home and heal up. And that was Arden down to half health just from three buff basic attacks from Spaghetti. However, looking over to SNK, I must say I really, really like the build coming up from SNK. Has got a contraption for the extra vision, extra cooldown, extra health as well. On top of that, has got Echo and Shatter Glass. That means SNK will be healing a truck and be able to do damage with that Holy Nova and the Divine, or rather Benediction. So healing now would be prioritized, or rather is the emphasis now for Infamous. They really want to be in the midst of fight, and on top of that as well, Infamous, or rather Spaghetti, or rather Chingy. Oh, I just kept getting names mixed up. Just wants their bestest, right? To just put out as much damage in the shortest amount of time, and with the amount of sustain that SNK can provide with this particular build on him, it is just insane the amount of heal that will come will be coming out from SNK on this grades. Yeah, and we do see that Kraken is back on the fold once again. Or I believe did they push through those turrets without even needing Kraken? Yes, they did. It just felt like they had to be honest. It felt like they had a Kraken with them. That is how strong and how good Infamous are at pushing through these objectives. And I mean, they've managed to break open the base. There's only the last two remaining turrets in front of the Vein Crystal for them. So one Kraken is all they need. And that looks like a bit of a glitch on my screen, guessing 
Should have landed that gauntlet elsewhere, but the wall catching him out, making it go back a fair bit. He does have the echo, however. There's not when you want to use the echo for a mistake like that. There's going to be the death from above on the back line, but they really near worth. Spaghetti who's pushing in. There's going to be the gauntlet, but a defensive one. Fountain used as well. Everything being used on the side of Brandy Esports just to escape. And Chingy is going to dive into the front line. Sync one doing a great job of getting the target lock and using the Surrey Strike to get around them. But I wouldn't be surprised if Infamous rush a Kraken now, or they will continue to focus down this lane. I mean, they can just push this lane out and rush for this Kraken as we do see Chingy starting the Kraken off. Spaghetti in a position. Oh, positioning by Spaghetti back here. So patient with it. He's waiting until the last second. Go to the line, but Sync 1 diving away instantly. There's going to be reverse of Judgment. Stunts out guessing, and now it's such in favor of Infamous, but Sync 1 not going down with our fight. Manages to find the kill onto Glaive, although he's the last one left standing for Brenny Esports. But Crystal Sentry is alive, and he's going to make Refugee there for now. Needs to be careful, however, because even with only Spaghetti and SNK, they can surely take the Kraken with the damage that Spaghetti has. He's got the old name current, Broken Myth, Shatter Glass, and now picking up that Frostburn. And has the Crystal Infusion as well. Spaghetti just so strong at point. 190 CS in, and we're 19 minutes into this game, so very good, perfect farm. Where this guy's going to go and challenge question, they are all on their own. Guessing is still in the base. Sync one's gonna go for it. They try and fight out with Spaghetti, but Spaghetti dodges out the death from above and gets the healing from Divine Intervention. Are they going to go back into the fight is the question. Guessing flares it out. Is he able to get the steal? No, he doesn't. He lands, but there still could be a turnaround for Bren if they act fast, but Second Divine Intervention coming through onto Spaghetti. 1,000 healing, just massive at this point. They're able to keep them alive, and really, they're forcing Bren Esports onto their back feet here. They've only got their last two turrets to defend. It is looking dire indeed. Yep, very, very dire. And now Spaghetti just putting down basic attacks onto Gassing, pushing with Helga down this lane, and hopefully or rather for the set of infamous hopefully closing this game out chingy once again very patient just looking for the afterburn mr jim with those on point just trying to poke out but a fight will ensue oh and great holy nova is gonna knock guessing and mr jim for them to go back to working on this crack and trying to defend but they need to try get some of infamous down and that's gonna be the death of uh, the the burst of judgment and uh, meanwhile sky able to pick up a kill onto glaive but they're going so low to mr adagio and adagio managed to pick up the kill pick up the turret mr jim trying to find their way to spaghetti but walks right into the holy nova kraken still at half out and it looks like this is game for infamous gg well played and infamous showing that they are still the top of the table managing to take it two to one although brenny sports putting up a great game a great match in the first game with that weapon power pedal they just weren't able to bring it through in the second one and obviously in this mode match it was banned out by infamous but overall like infamous all in all they don't really need kills they just need they just know when to apply pressure and where to apply it and they can just easily secure objectives for themselves unlike the previous game in this game itself 12 minutes in or close to 12 minutes in oh another afterburn Yep, and we do see up in lane info just Spaghetti and Chingy right now. Looks like SNK now going to the fight as SNK jumping in with the benediction. Mr. Jim going very low. There's the dragon's breath being used, and Chingy using the afterburn to pump them away. But Sink looks like he's going to fall, and he does infamous picking up another kill and slow the gold lead as they now go in and. They are trying to push for this anchor turret at only 12 minutes 20 in, and it looks like they'll be able to do it. They have the damage available to them, but look at that. The return damage coming out by Chingy as he dives onto Sync 1, and they manage to get the turret anyway. Infamous just being so overwhelming at this point, and really pushing towards that 10k gold lead. Now seeing at 32.8 over to the 34.3, and that's the sentry eliminated, I believe, already. 
Yep, that is the Sentry Eliminator. 12 minutes and 50 in. Not the fastest one. Um, according to records, uh, Vainglory records. I think the fastest one was 8 minutes and 30, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. But all in all, Infamous doing very well for themselves in this game. Inching ever so closer to the 10k gold lead that they generally would have against another team and brand new sports now they just really need to pull themselves together as a team to only find fights that they have got you know the advantage against mr jim now lacking seriously in farm and in damage as well spaghetti already has got four full damage items as compared to mr jim only having three granted you know mr jim you know, wanted that early reflex block and thus not able to complete the items as soon as Spaghetti. But Infamous now just looking so strong, very, very strong. Their third gold miner this game. Yep, and that is going to push them up to 36k. So close now, trailing behind the 6.8. But I'm looking at it as the fact that Infamous are aiming to get to 10k here ahead of the side of Brenny Sports and there's going to be the engage coming out by Infamous and Spaghetti going to be up to pick up that kill with the Dragon's Breath. Mr. Jim doing a great job with the death from above to push away Infamous but it's not going to be enough. They're still going to make work on this turret so early on for what you would consider to be a late game team comp. They're really trying to finish this early but Spaghetti already with four damage right it's so so deadly, they need to be careful, Mr. Jim, so low on health, and they're just working on their second turret now, guessing is back up on the fall, but Sink was talking about as well. Sink got, or rather, Weapon Petal does it very well in the early game, falls off very, very hard in the mid game, and comes back super strong in the late game after he gets a four or three damage items, and the side of Infamous just did not allow that to happen, push every advantage they get, and just push for the win, just pre-15 minutes. Very well played to Infamous right there. And although Mr. Jim definitely put up a good fight in that of lane, but all in all, it didn't quite matter because Spaghetti on that mage roll was just so very dominant in the laning phase itself, just disallowing Mr. Jim on that CP sky to farm up and get the items. But all in all, I must say, you know, I'm really looking forward because the next match will be the deciding factor as to who moves on into the finals to go up against Nebulae and who will go up into the third and fourth place playoff. And, you know, I request you know, what do you think? You know, Brandy Sports, they looked very strong yesterday. They looked very strong in the first game. But Infamous finally did find their footing in that or the second game. What would you expect coming into the third game? Mm, well, it's hard to say. I mean, there's only so many uh, within your turn. And they did end up giving the uh, Grace and Glaive combo over to the side of Infamous, and I think that just proved how strong they were. Of course, they were able to pick up the Scarf to finish off their comp, which just, it made it so perfect for them because they hyper-carried the Scarf, who just had such good sieging potential. And I'm not really sure how you shut that down, especially with a team against Infamous, but we'll have to see if Brenny Sports have any idea of what they're going to do into this next draft as we jump into the final draft between the two teams, which is going to be the deciding factor of who moves on to the finals for week three. Yep, so I'm sure draft is ready. So without further ado, let's not keep anyone waiting. Let's jump in to the draft. Right, so coming into the draft, like you say, a lot of variables to think through, especially since now Infamous on the blue side and Brent Esports on that of red. Ooh, and there's going to be the line. On the side Infamous, very target making they want guessing to be playing back. Now the question is what is going to be the first ban here coming out from the side of Brent Esports? Are they going to go for that scarf or perhaps even that grace that uh, we've seen being played to great success? Well, they can try to rule a, a mage out, I want to say, but they will just stick to the draft that they have been doing so far and that will be re Thing that you know, Mr. Jim don't want to face is spaghetti in that lane and the scarf that can just burn down the money so very quickly. 
that way, you know, when Sing Kwan is on that pedal, pedal is up against that of Chingy, and it will be a relatively easy time for the pedal to just farm up, get his items as well. Granted, you don't get the items as fast as when you are placed the date, but all in all, it will be a, a logical put up or rather logical swap up coming up for the side of Brand Esports. But back to your question, I hope, like said, the infamous will have a one up pushing this into a game three. And mm. the only reason I think that way is because I think Infamous has got what it takes. Fran Chong has got a potential as well to close this series out 2-0. to oh, There's no issues. I mean, they beat one of the powerhouses in Southeast Asia. They can definitely do it again in their own stride. So I'm not surprised if they do. But I hope, because now at this point in time, Infamous is kind of the underdogs now. Mr. Jim. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mr. Jim needs to be careful. Does get and there's going to be Glaive picking up the return kill. And you can already see that what you said before about putting this Glaive and this Grace on the same team is such a dangerous idea to do. I mean, they, they allowed it, essentially. They picked up the Lance first pick where they had Grace as an option, but it was more of that comfort pick, I'd like to say, for Guessing X. It is definitely a comfort pick. I mean, Guessing X just plays so well on this gray so the, i mean on this uh land so there is no reason whatsoever to just swap it out i mean if it's not broken why change it at all so and with lance as well there is a lot of cc's that lance can provide a lot of utility lance can provide going into games so i'm not surprised why they pick it up but all in all we are looking at a very 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 slow game they just need their items they just want their items for scary now taking a couple of four barrage hits here and there, but all in all, it will be fine for both teams. Yep, looks like just a bit of early game. A uh, few first kills that went over, and uh, if we look in terms of early game, it's hard to say. I would almost give it to Infamous, just the CC they have, allowing them to get the kills with the Benediction into the Holy Nova that Grace has available to them, and then Chingy with the Afterburn. And then you've got even Count Out for Goop that can be used to slow down and really catch out the enemies. I think that Infamous have a better early game in this situation. And you talked about before uh, the Weapon Power Pedal having a very interesting kind of power spike pattern. And I'm not sure how well it will work out against this enemy team who has this guy who they are deciding to hyper-carry with uh, 39 CS over to the 24 that Mr. Jim has. It will Gonna... be too late. Whitefoot comes out and SNK in the middle of the fight doesn't have the gauntlet up for another five seconds as long as Brand Esports can run away from this one. They should be able to win that out. The objective that they were managed to take and they get the Impale onto Spaghetti, but they need to be careful now. Oh my god, the damage going down on Chingy. Mr. Jim taking them down instantly and no one is checking him at the moment as he gets a double kill onto Spaghetti. Goes for the triple, but it's gonna go to sink one, the ace overall for the team of Bren Esports and they just took that against Infamous, a team that is just such a known powerhouse and it shows why Bren Esports is so strong at the moment and they're pushing through with this Kraken. They may even be able to end this one. Kraken's still so healthy and Bren Esports with so much damage. They're just tanking up this turret. They're going to push through the first base turret. Chingy is there, but going in alone is a very dangerous uh, decision to make and Mr. Jim gain chase down by Spaghetti as long as Guessing can be there to save him. They do get the Giffen Wall onto SNK but Spaghetti is still alive but only for a second. Mr. Jim so low on health manages to take them down and now it's all on to Chingy. He's going to be able to find Sync 1 but the Kraken finds the turret. Black Feather able to get the crystal before it's all over and Bren Esports game the first game. Oh my, I would not be surprised if we see a pedal ban coming out from Infamous into the second match. Very good game, very well played coming out from Brand Esports Stan. Very shaky early game because of how pedal scales, like I mentioned earlier on, or rather very shaky mid game where, you know, where pedal still needs an item, still is looking to scale up and do not have that much of a damage. But when it comes down to late game, once pedal gets four of her items, and it's just very good game. The, the game is almost set in stone after when Brand Esports or rather Mr. Jim on that pedal just able to get 
so farmed up and so healthy and I don't think the double weapon comp will work against what Brand Esports is putting out. Only reason being it's so easy for a CP Black Feather to just counter you and CP Black Feather is one of those heroes that wants to build defense anyways. Yep, so I mean no prizes there. Me, I going into that map. And when I saw that they picked up the pedal, I was quite certain that would be that weapon power pedal. You did talk about possible counter of whether Infamous would want to go for that CP box just so they could get the resonance damage. But it seemed like for at least the start of the game, they were clearing out those Munions a lot of the time, but you could see going down into late, it was more so that no one was even checking Pedal. They were just so focused on Black Feather, who was up in their faces, and Pedal was let uh, free for most of those fights. You talked about before on uh, the weapon power Pedal having a very interesting kind of power spike pattern, and I'm not sure how well it will work out against this enemy team who has this guy, who they are deciding to hyper carry with uh, 39 CS over to the 24 that Mr. Jim has at the moment. So, yeah, it, it will be tough for Brand Esports this match, to say the least. Yep, it will be relatively tough for a Brand Esports since, you know, Scarf can just remove Petal, get to the back lines in terms of that Spitfire on those Spitfires. So it will be difficult, but then we cannot quite count on Mr. Jim as well. Mr. Jim on this sky means that he can just slowly strike into the back lines try the bestest to remove spaghetti by guessing x though oh chingy hey looking yeah oh they sticking around but mr jim going to those backs to pick up and i think this is what brand esports realized that they're going to match the sky with the scarf at least a bit if they want to get into this game a bit more and survive through the mid game because Infamous putting down so much pressure on this turret right now. You can see Spaghetti on that back line just doing work onto the turret, putting Spitfires in and then guessing not able to find the impales that they need. But I think even if they do at this point, Bren Esports can't really go in off the back of them. They don't have the early game damage like Infamous does. They don't indeed, and Chingy very patient with those afterburn, just looking for the right and the opportune moment for him to go in, but they will just hope to siege this turret. SNK goes in with a benediction of Chingy, there you go. Mr. Jim actually body blocking one of those Spitfires from hitting the turret, and there's going to be the death way in Mr. Jim land for barrage damage onto Spaghetti. <laughs> All the positioning right now from Bren trying to keep his turret alive, but they're going to have to back off as the minions push in and Chingy able to just go in there and pick it up with ease. And now whether Infamous are going to be greedy is the question and go into the enemy jungle to steal away some farm, they are going to do so. Spaghetti needing that mid tree and able to get the healing and mana benefits from that. And they're now going to move their way onto gold miner. They really aren't stopping with anything and this looks a lot more like the Infamous we know. They get the kill, they get some objectives. And in this case, they didn't even get objectives. They simply pushed Bren Esports back, took their turret, took some farm, and they've gone and taken the mid camp as well. Yep, exactly. I mean, with one kill, you can quite achieve a lot. You don't really have to kill, kill. Just get your enemies down very, very low, and you can push pretty much. You can pretty much push your advantage from there, just capitalizing on how low they are. If not, then the amount of damage they do not have in this current early game, because. Sync one on that weapon power petal, you really need farm. After they've taken their first turret, it is a good idea for that to be the next objective. It's quite hard to push in. Yep, definitely. I mean, Crystal Sentry and some farm is a bad idea. Yep, I mean, after you take the first turret, generally half of the jungle quite belongs to you. You have got that roaming opportunity and you can just capitalize on the fact that, you know, the, your enemies cannot be anywhere near the first turret after you've taken it down. It is Spaghetti though, looking to put some pressure onto Mr. Jim. Buffed himself up as well. Sync one goes in with the fort barrage, but just not connecting whatsoever. Infamous now being super patient with uh, their engagers and understanding the power spikes that maybe Sync one has got now. But Infamous going in, pushing this wave in, probably trying to take the second turret out of Bren Esports' head. Yep. Oh, Mr. Jim going down instantly. This back. Damage. 
find Sean Vega. As, as SK uses the Divine Intervention to keep him alive, has the Echo available, so Divine Intervention up once again to help them push through this turret, but they don't even need it, they're going to be able to take it, and that's getting kills and take, taking so much away from it's really pushes them through to the win slowly but surely what's really I think the way to beat Essing, uh, Infamous is to even with them throughout the whole game but it's such a tough thing to do it's easier said than done of course or manage to get Kraken steals and turn it around late game with some spectacular comeback but there's going to be no gold mine steal at this point and SNK are going to be able to escape the grasps of Bren Esports and we can see that lead starting to build up for the side of Infamous I mean they've already got 9 kills over to 1 kill on the side of um, on the side of Brandy Esports, but when we look at the gold, there's that 30k over to 23.k. It's a fairly similar situation to last time, and if they win any more team fights and take any more objectives, they're definitely on their way to that 10k lead. Where I just think Infamous is unstoppable. Yep, I mean Infamous, so very comfortable on the respective heroes that they are on and they are playing on. So, you know, if Infamous do close this out and do not have a 10k gold, it will be oh, more pressure coming out from Infamous. Yep, Mr. Jim needing to be careful the Infamous really want anchor pressure as soon as possible, not letting Bren Esports get towards that late game. SNK jumping sync one, but Black Feather isn't here to help defend the turret, but it looks like Infamous might back out from that. Death from above the pick up on the Scarf as they are going to have the next pick after this ban, but that is the question. What do you think? Ooh, Infamous oh, Infamous will be the ban I was going to ask you that, but they answered it for me. Two very targeted bans coming into this final matchup. They go for the Lance ban and they go for the Pedal ban to finish it off. And this could imply even more so why the side of Bren Esports uh, could go for that scarf. I mean, there's no need for them to go for pedal now because they can't. So, what do you think is going to be the answer? I don't think Bren Esports would really go for that scarf. It hasn't quite shown in their previous gameplay at all. If anything, they are giving a lot of thought into this all in all and they will settle for the Arden. Guessing X has played a quite a good Arden all in all. But I mean for me if you were to ask me Petal will not be picked up. I mean since Petal is banned out and the side of Brand Esports don't have a history of picking up Scarf, they will just open a last pick maybe to a Targa to maybe just starve that of Scarf out if Infamous brings out this scarf and Targa will be highly a pickup for Sync One. Sync One has worked very well with the Targa, showed great performance as well when going up against Impunity yesterday, if I remember correctly. All in all. Yep, and with that, it is maybe more so for give a that team by securing this art and pickup and it. We could always see a replay of the first match that they had, and Infamous could have taken that art in a way. So I think locking down that art and making sure they have a decent support is also a good idea. Yep, definitely. I mean, with an Arden, you just boost mobility. And with that gauntlet as well, a, a form of soft CC, unless, of course, you can land your gauntlet on all three members of your enemy's team. But this time, Infamous really taking the time and will ultimately lock in the Grace and Glaive combination. And honestly, like I said, they should have just stopped the or remove the glaive out from infamous infamous just played so well on that glaive and this time we will see once again spaghetti going on to the cp adagio oh cp adagio making a i mean infamous have to and now we're going to see what brandy esports decide to go and reply to this because once again they have allowed the glaive and grace pick up for the side of Infamous. And it just goes so strong with so many laners. I'm not sure if Sky is the answer here. I really don't know. As much as I love it, I think that it's a good pick because going against this Grace and this uh, Glaive, even though you have this Surrey Strike available, it's only a You know, uh, 
not quite telling with the double swifty being picked up however spaghetti or they might just go for double weapon power that might work as well but we are seeing a very early aggression and we do see a very very early aggression Brennan Esports back, but look, we've gone on the side of Bren. We have that weapon power pedal coming out once again, but will it work against Infamous is the question. We'll just have to wait and see as Infamous pushing very deep into the enemy jungle. Will Bren Esports let them get away with that? You see guests sing on this Lance needs to land these impales and misses by think manages to no doesn't manage to actually steal away and is going to hand over first blood to the side of infamous and they're going to be able to steal away the mid camp and the mid triad from the side of the brand esports yeah we do see very very aggressive maneuvers coming out from brand esports whenever they do settle for a petal petal just works very well in that early game and generally as petal you can kind of just trump over chingy on that of grace because grace just do not quite have access to the back lines almost immediately so that is one thing maybe brand esports were looking to do earlier on with that aggression that came out from them um, early on but with this Pagetti will be heading back into the lane and will be going up against mr jim on this battle and in the early game like i said <clears throat> battle can put out a lot of damage and aggression especially with those very very irritating minions uh minions at least and on top of that as well the range on pato snk though popping that flash will keep him alive for just a tad oh, longer we see chingy jumping into the fight with benediction to secure another kill for the side of infamous taking down that pedal this is something that I kind of worry about. It is going to be very heavily on guessing on the early game, really protecting Mr. Jim up in that lane, because now with Grace being uh, on hit hero, it just, usually you've got Grace as a very aggressive roamer, but in this situation is going to be able to jump in and actually do quite a surprising amount of damage. Yep, Mr. Jim once again going back into lane. SNK will be the next target, but Spaghetti is right back now. All the Mannions pop with one Vanguard. And this is, in the early game, you can't quite say much because a weapon petal gets his, her spike works in a very um, weird or interesting manner, if I have to put it. Um, she's very good in the early game. She falls out in the mid game. And then once she gets all her three items, up to four damage items, she, cut, she starts coming back up into the game and can put out so much damage with that extended range on that. Um, on their basic attacks with the overdrive on trampoline as well so this is one thing maybe infamous have to watch out for but we will be seeing a cp or rather a weapon um spaghetti uh we weapon spaghetti it still helps out in the long run is spaghetti gonna jump in there with the afterburn game the kill getting the crystal sentry and it looks like they might even catch out guessing oh guessing not able to make the jump over the wall is in a bit of trouble and he does it at the last second oh very clutch it managing to not hand over another kill to the side of infamous but they're just gonna go for that turret instead they take it down instantly and this is definitely looking a lot more like a general infamous game that we see oh that impale missed ah uh, that impale could have just caught chingy out immediately and mr jim going down very very low but it looks like the side of infamous don't even way bren my own spaghetti just strong at the moment has n barely any actually no defense at this point just going for that shadow glass eve of harvest uh and the clockwork building into the broken myth and right now i think they can really rely on two factors the fact that brennan esports really just unable to at the stage there at and the second fact that you've got grace on your team with the divine intervention and you can really rely on that if the enemy ever does jump on you Yep, definitely. And one thing as well is that we see this is very, very like infamous all in all. They don't really need kills. They just need they just know when to apply pressure and where to apply it. And they can just easily secure objectives for themselves. Unlike the previous game, in this game itself, twelve minutes in or close to twelve minutes in, oh another afterburn. Yep, and we do see up in lane infamous just spaghetti and chingy right now. Looks like SNK now going to the fight as SNK jumping in with the benediction. Mr. Jim going very low. There's the dragon's breath being used, and Chingy 
and using the afterburn to pump them away, but Gersink looks like he's going to fall, and he does infinite picking up another kill and slow gold lead as they now go in and they are trying to push for this anchor turret at only 12 minutes 20 in, and it looks like they'll be able to do it. They have the damage available to them, but look at that. The return damage coming out by Chingy as he dives onto Sync 1, and they manage to get the turret anyway. Infamous just being so overwhelming at this point, and really pushing towards that 10k gold lead. Now seeing at 32.8 over to the 34.3, and that's the Sentry eliminated, I believe, already. Yep, that is the Sentry Eliminator, 12 minutes and 50 in, not the fastest one, um, according to records, uh, Vainglory records, I think the fastest one was 8 minutes and 30, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, but all in all, Infamous doing very well for themselves in this game, inching ever so closer to the 10k gold lead that they generally would have. Oh. Of course, Infamous overall is a team, very skilled players in that, but they just understand how the game works and how to win it out and finish these games. Yep, and Mr. Jim on this guy really needs to get all the items needed for Sky to just put out, you know, enough damage all in all. So at this point in time, we'll see a rather slow, farmy game, if you like to call it, rather than Infamous. Infamous, in fact, can just push their, you know, the advantage now, knowing that Sky requires quite an amount of farm, uh, quite an amount of items to actually put out enough damage, Infamous is playing very stale, very stagnated, just would not help the cause whatsoever. I mean, they have got their great power spike now. Spaghetti has got a shatter glass, Eve of Harvest, and a Clockwork, whereas Mr. Jim on that sky only has got their Broken Myth and Frostburn. This is great time for Infamous to just push and push and push, but they do respect Brand Esports as a whole and do not want to go quite as aggressive as they can actually do. Ooh, but that might change up in just a second as we the Crystal Infusion being born. Spaghetti is on hold right now and Chingy picking up that tornado trigger. This could be what they were waiting for. Although Spaghetti had that power spike earlier, so does Chingy now as they pick that up before Sync 1 even has their second item. And you can see how much behind Bren Esports are because previously, as you mentioned, when Spaghetti went to buy that clockwork was when Mr. Jim finished off their Broken Myth. So a whole item ahead of Mr. Jim at this point. And as you can see, Sync 1 with only 230 gold is still quite a far way off completing that Tornado Trigger themselves. And it looks like unless they have to go for the Steel, Infamous are going to be able to get that gold mine and now push away Brenny Sports. Guessing needs to be careful. And there's a lot of damage going down. Fountain forced to be used on the side of Bren before Barrage doing a lot of damage. Meanwhile, no one checking Spaghetti. Spaghetti able yeah, to get some free shots in with the Spitfires. Doesn't have a broken myth just yet, so it's not going to be stacking up, but still helps out in the long run. Is Spaghetti going to jump in there with the afterburn game to kill getting the Crystal Sentry? And it looks like they might even catch out Guessing. Oh, Guessing not able to make the jump over the wall is in a bit of trouble, and he does it at the last second. Oh, very clutch. It managing to not hand over another kill to the side of Infamous, but they're just going to go for that turret instead. They take it down instantly. And this is definitely looking a lot more like a general infamous game that we see. Oh, that impale missed! Ah, uh, that impale could have just caught Chingy out immediately and Mr. Jim going down very, very low. But it looks like the side of infamous don't even... ...way Bren eats my own spaghetti just too strong at the moment, has n barely any, actually no defense at this point. Just going for that Shadow Glass Eve of Harvest. Now, the objective that they were managed to take and they get the Impale onto Spaghetti, but they need to be careful now. Oh my god, the damage going down on Chingy. Mr. Jim taking them down instantly, and no one is checking him at the moment as he gets a double kill onto Spaghetti. Goes for the triple, but it's going to go to Sync 1, the ace overall for the team of Bren Esports. And they just took that against Infamous, a team that has just such a known powerhouse and it shows why Bren Esports is so strong at the moment and they're pushing through with this Kraken they may even be able to end this one Kraken's still so healthy and Bren Esports with so much damage they're just tanking up this turret they're going to push through the first base turret Chingy is there but going in alone is a very dangerous uh, decision to make and Mr. Jim gain chased down by Spaghetti as long as Guessing can be there to save him. They do get the Giffen Wall onto SNK, but Spaghetti is still alive only for a second. Mr. Jim so low on health. 
manages to take them down. And now it's all on to Chingy. He's going to be able to find Sync One, but the Kraken finds Vitara Black Feather able to get the Crystal before it's all over. And Bren Esports game the first game. Oh my, I would not be surprised if we see a pedal ban coming out from Infamous into the second match. Very good game, very well played coming out from Bren Esports, Stan. Very shaky early game because of how Petal scales, like I mentioned earlier on, or rather very shaky mid game, where, you know, where Petal still needs her items, still is looking to scale up and do not have that much of a damage. But when it comes down to late game, once Petal gets four of her items, and it's just very good game that the game is almost set in stone after when Brand Esports or rather Mr. Jim on that paddle just able to get so farmed up and so healthy. And I don't think the double weapon comp will work against what Brand Esports is putting out. Only reason being it's so easy for a CP Black Feather to just counter you. And CP Black Feather is one of those heroes that wants to build defense anyways. Yep, so I mean no prizes there. Me, I going into that map. And when I saw that they picked up the pedal, I was quite certain that would be that weapon power pedal. You did talk about possible counter of whether Infamous would want to go for that CP box just so they could get the resonance damage, but it seemed like for at least the start of the game, they were clearing out those Munions a lot of the time, but you could see going down into late, it was more so that no one was even checking Petal. They were just so focused on Blackfeather, who was up in their faces, and Petal was let uh, free for most of those fights, and just able to rain havoc and build up or just put down their own damage with the basic attacks they had. Yep, definitely. I mean, Petal has got such incredible range, and in order to reach her, it's either you go for the... But it seemed like for... At least the start of the game, they were clearing out those Munions a lot of the time, but you could see going down into late, it was more so that no one was even checking Petal. They were just so focused on Blackfeather, who was up in their faces, and Petal was let uh, free for most of those fights, and just able to rain havoc and build up or just put down their own damage with the basic attacks they had. Yep, definitely. I mean, Petal has got such incredible range and in order to reach her, it's either you go for the weapon dash or the can burst her down in a couple of hits, like two, three, three, four basic attacks. That way you can just remove Petal very quickly from the early game for the early game fight and then just counter the other one afterwards. Grace, I understand where they are coming from. They can jump in, remove Petal, but Black Feather just being in Spaghetti's face, inching his face is just so difficult for the side of Infamous to just work around the amount of CCs that Gassing is putting out as well. Yep. And with that, we will be uh, going into our next draft for the second game. So we won't keep you guys waiting any longer. Let's jump right on into that. This time, Bren Esports being on the blue side. And they're going to ban out Celeste instantly. And over on the red, we do have Infamous. The question is... Are they going to ban the pedal? No, they go for the Idris. And now the where I think pedal could be a possible second ban, but whether Brenny Sports would take it as a first pick, I don't think so. I still believe there are too many meta heroes such as this Lance to pick up. And they're going to go with it again because guessing very comfortable on this Lance. I mean, both guessing and Sync One very comfortable on this Lance. And the Celeste ban out is not quite a surprise at all because Celeste just does so well against the Petal. Your Helio Genesis, Petal tries to come in, you drop landmines all over, and you just blow them up, blow them up in Petal's faces. And it's a one trip, one way trip back to base for Petal. And thus, the Celeste is being banned out for the side of Brand Esports every single game. And once again, we do see that Idris. Band out and a gray is being picked up by the side of Infamous. Yeah, and I do think we are still waiting for the band to come through for the side of Infamous. They are having a bit of a think on this one. I mean, last time they went for the Sky Band, which was maybe not so good, but they're going to go for the Kestrel Band, leaving Petal still on the table. Do you think Infamous are just looking to counter this Petal this time? Or they might, I don't know, fall into the same trap? I mean, they can. They have got a lot 
of heroes to actually counter the battle but maybe the side of uh, Brandy Sports would like to change things up and not just rely on cannot quite count on Mr. Jim as well. Mr. Jim on this guy means that he can just slowly strike into the back lines, try the bestest to remove spaghetti but guessing X though. Oh, oh Chingy. Hey, looking. Yeah, Alva is sticking around, but Mr. Jim going to those backs to pick up, and I think this is what Brent Esports realized, that they're going to match the sky with the scarf, at least a bit, if they want to get into this game a bit more and survive through the mid game, because Infamous putting down so much pressure on this turret right now. You can see Spaghetti on that back line, just doing work onto the turret, putting Spitfires in, and then guessing not able to find the impales that they need, but I think even if they do at this point, Bren Esports can't really go in off the back of them. They don't have the early game damage like Infamous does. They don't indeed, and Chingy very patient with those afterburn, just looking for the right and the opportune moment for him to go in, but they will just hope to siege this turret. SNK goes in with a benediction of Chingy, there you go. Mr. Jim actually body blocking one of those Spitfires from hitting the turret, and there's going to be a death way in Mr. Jim land for barrage damage onto Spaghetti. <laughs> All the positioning right now from Bren trying to keep his turret alive, but they're going to have to back off as the minions push in, and Chingy able to just go in there and pick it up with ease. And now, whether Infamous are going to be greedy is the question, and go into the enemy jungle to steal away some farm, they are going to do so. Spaghetti needing that mid tree and able to get the healing and mana benefits from that. And they're now going to move their way onto Goldminer. They really aren't stopping with anything, and this looks a lot more like the Infamous we know. They get the kill, they get some objectives, and in this case, they didn't even get objectives. They simply pushed Bren Esports back, took their turret, took some farm, and they've gone and taken the mid camp as well. Yep, exactly. I mean, with one kill, you can quite achieve a lot. You don't really have to kill kill. Just get your enemies down very, very low, and you can push pretty much. You can pretty much push your advantage from there, just capitalizing on how low they are. If not, then the amount of damage they do not have in this current early game, because. Sync one on that weapon power petal, you really need farm to get up to your first tornado trigger into your second one as well. If you have those, then you can definitely put out um, adequate damage. But at this point in time, Sync one will just lack the damage. SNK being very, very outrageous now and just going in for an invade. Ooh, and this is infamous once again. Go um, it's more so helping them out in towards the late game. It's a bit of a I guess invest out the crystal century so early and now we see that they're going to just have that much more freedom roaming into the enemy but get back the gym to push him up the turret and to pick up gym caught up in the vanguard should be up stay like belly long goes down in the end and sink one I don't think able to finish off a kill in return so good job for Chingy rotating up behind them they're able to make it an even trade and keep their advantage for Chingy. Almost catching out. No, the damage coming out from Chingy so early on was enough to kill Guessing. Yep, and Spaghetti sitting on 2.7 thousand gold. Really needs a shop soon. Only had a Swifty and a first tier boots in his pocket right now. But all in all, Spaghetti is still contributing in the team fights with that sustain and the gift of fire that he can put out for his allies in this early game. But all in all, for in order for Spaghetti to actually put out a lot of pressure into lane, he really needs to shop and then just outpoke Mr. Jim in this laning phase. We all know Adagio just does so well in the early game. Only because of the amount of damage he can have with just one alternating current as compared to other carries out there. And a lot of his basic attacks, even built as CP, comes from his gift of comes from his B ability that buff on himself. So that is one thing that maybe Brand Esports have to take advantage of and that is just a turtle up farm up for the late game because Sync Sync One and Mr. Jim just does so well in that of late game as compared to the early game. Yep, and we will have to fake him down. Just judging from previous infamous matches, they will be able to take this turret by about seven to eight minutes if they continue to put the pressure down. Infamous, 
you know, seeing it three kills, that's a pretty good job. Meanwhile, Bren's still back at one, so it's nothing to frown upon. But there's the death from above, catches out Chingy and SNK. The thing is, right now, Bren Esports in a bit of a similar situation to before. They just don't have the damage to respond to the opportunities they're given. Oh, Chingy comes in, probably looking for an after, but SNK taking two tart shots from there. Chingy walking very close, still holding on to that of there as uh, we see Sync One pushing on to the lane with this Frostburn in hand. Is game ready to go on to Spaghetti, but Chingy is nearby and Wayne. There's going to be the Holy Nova does catch out Sync One and Mr. Jim very low on the front line is just going to have to fight for it. But Chingy with an amazing afterburn helps Spaghetti pick up that kill and then now looking very strong. They should be up to. Uh, sustain this one out if they want to push for the tower, but realizing that many are going to turn their attention elsewhere and just move down into the jungle. Yep, very well played coming out from Infamous there. Very swiftly picking up three kills, or rather, three kills. Let's break out. Yep, it will be down to how team fights break out, but I do understand where Ching is coming from or the set of Infamous is coming from. The 40% damage reduction that Grace offers with that Benediction. So whenever Grace Benediction in, she provides a directional shield of 40% in damage reduction for his and for her entire teammate. For her entire team at least. And I guess this is what that Spaghetti have to make use of and take advantage of. And it will be this damage reduction, but they will be taking Kraken now. And it will lay off previous to the side oh of Infamous. My. Oh, there's going to be a flare coming. But it will gonna... be too late. Whitefoot comes out and SNK in the middle of the fight doesn't have the gauntlet up for another five seconds as long as Brand Esports can run away from this one. They should be able to win that out. The objective that they were managed to take and they get the impale onto Spaghetti, but they need to be careful now. Oh my god, the damage going down on Chingy. Mr. Jim taking them down instantly and no one is checking him at the moment as he gets a double kill onto Spaghetti. Goes for the triple, but it's gonna go to sink one, the ace overall for the team of Bren Esports and they just took that against Infamous, a team that is just such a known powerhouse and it shows why Bren Esports is so strong at the moment and they're pushing through with this Kraken. They may even be able to end this one. Kraken's still so healthy and Bren Esports with so much damage, they're just tanking up this turret. They're going to push through the first base turret. Chingy is there, but going in alone is a very dangerous uh, decision to make and Mr. Jim gain chase down by Spaghetti as long as Guessing can be there to save him. They do get the Giffen Wall onto SNK, but Spaghetti is still alive but only for a second. Mr. Jim so low on health manages to take them down and now it's all on to Chingy. He's going to be able to find Sync One, but the Kraken finds the turret. Black Feather able to get the crystal before it's all over. And Bren Esports game the first game. Oh my, I would not be surprised if we see a pedal ban coming out from Infamous into the second match. Very good game, very well played coming out from Brand Esports Stan. Very shaky early game because of how Petal scales, like I mentioned earlier on, or rather very shaky mid game where, you know, where Petal still needs her items, still is looking to scale up and do not have that much of a damage. But when it comes down to late game, once Petal gets four of her items, and it's just very good game. That the game is almost set in stone after when Brand Esports or rather Mr. Jim on that paddle just able to get so farmed up and so healthy. And I don't think the double weapon comp will work against what Brand Esports is putting out. Only reason being it's so easy for a CP Black Feather to just counter you. And CP Black Feather is one of those heroes that wants to build defense. Anyways, I think that's what's so important as long as they can continue to do that and not let Infamous get too far ahead, they still have an opportunity for them into the mid to late game. Yep, and this is one thing maybe. I mean, all in all, I want to say that Brand Esports have got a better late game comp as compared to, say, Infamous and Spaghetti. I mean, granted, they have got an Adagio, so that would make full sense. The problem now is that Brand Esports probably very very held back at this point in time and just just not looking to push or rather I, I'm sorry I, I mean infamous is very held back at this point in time and just refusing to push their early game advantage I mean infamous oh I'm not sure if it's refusing or respecting grannies 
a dangerous position for Sky to be in as they get taken down instantly. The Divine Intervention going to heal Spaghetti back up, so anything Mr. Jim did before is going to be uh, useless. Mr. Jim actually trying to get the minions at the back, so stopping the side of Infamous from pushing onto that tower. A very good technique, but whether they'll get caught out for it is the question. They don't have any Rose Offensives available, and guessing going to jump in there with the Vanguard to try save them, but gets taken down instead, and they're both going to fall. Sky is up and the only one left to defend this turret bow, I don't think they can do it on their own. They need to be careful to not get taken out themselves and hand over the ace. Chingy already working on stealing some farm away. And this was the slip up you saw in that fight. Sink one just trying to get in there, found themselves in the Holy Nova. They got knocked up, and meanwhile, Chingy was right next to that race. A damage onto Sink one, take them out instantly. And then they just turned their attention to protecting Spaghetti, who was being jumped on by Mr. Jim, and it just worked out so well for Infamous. Yep, and we saw the amount of damage that Spaghetti can put out onto Guessing X on that of Arden. Um, and Arden is the uh, dedicated Rome, that dedicated tank all in all, and yes, Spaghetti can just put out so much damage. Oh, the amount of damage on Sink One. Sink One going very low. Push this, and they are going paying attention, but luckily it was whether Chingy's going to go over that wall. I wonder if he had the intention of doing so, but no, they're going to go for this Crystal Sentry. A bit later than the previous games we have seen by them, but still a fairly early Crystal Sentry overall. After they've taken their first turret, it is a good idea for that to be the next objective. It's quite hard to push in. Yep, definitely. I mean, Crystal Sentry and some farm is a bad idea. Yep, I mean, after you take the first turret, generally half of the jungle quite belongs to you. You have got that roaming opportunity and you can just capitalize on the fact that, you know, that, that your enemies cannot be anywhere near the first turret. Chase on Spaghetti. I don't think they can catch him out. I mean, Spaghetti has his own Sonic Zoom. SNK has the Vanguard to keep him out of danger. But for that, I mean, it's a fairly even trade once again. Both these teams, if anything, Bren Esports slightly ahead in the gold lead, seeing at 35.9k, and Infamous slightly back at 34.3. So it's barely any difference at this point, and it just depends how the team fights break out. Yep, it will be down to how team fights break out, but I do understand where Ching is coming from or the set of Infamous is coming from. The 40% damage reduction that Grace offers with that benediction. So whenever Grace benediction in, she provides a directional shield of 40% in damage reduction for his and for her entire teammate. For her entire team at least. And I guess this is what that spaghetti have to make use of and take advantage of. And it will be this damage reduction, but they will be taking Kraken now and it will lay up previous to the side oh of Infamous. My. Oh, there's gonna be a flare coming. But it will gonna be too late. White Foot comes out and SNK in the middle of the fight doesn't have the gauntlet up for another five seconds as long as Brand Esports can run away from this one. They should be able to win that out. The objective that they were managed to take and they get the impale onto Spaghetti, but they need to be careful now. Oh my god, the damage going down on Chingy. Mr. Jim taking them down instantly and no one is checking him at the moment as he gets a double kill onto Spaghetti. Goes for the triple, but it's gonna go to Sink One, the ace overall for the team of Bren Esports and they just took that against Infamous, a team that is just such a known powerhouse and it shows why Bren Esports is so strong at the moment and they're pushing through with this Kraken. They may even be able to end this one. Kraken still so healthy and Bren Esports with so much damage. They're just tanking up this turret. They're going to push through the first base turret. Chingy is there, but going in alone is a very dangerous a uh, decision to make and Mr. Jim gain chased down by Spaghetti as long as Guessing can be there to save him. They do get the Giffen Wall onto SNK, but Spaghetti is still alive but only for a second. Mr. Jim so low on health manages to take them down and now it's all on to Chingy. He's gonna be up to find Sync One, but the Kraken finds the turret Black Feather able to get the crystal before it's all over. And Bren Esports game the first game. Oh my, I would not be surprised if we see a pedal ban coming out from Infamous into the second match.
Very good game, very well played coming out from Brand Esports Stan. Very shaky early game because of how Petal scales, like I mentioned earlier on, or rather very shaky mid game where you know where Petal still needs her items, still is looking to scale up and do not have that much of a damage. But when it comes down to late game, once Petal gets four of her items and it's just very good game. We do see an echo or no, no, no echo on maybe the first item was but it looks like that's a potion however that yep. SNK uh, at the moment if he gets an echo I think that's where infamous might be able to turn her around if they're able to separate Bren esports I think they have a chance because right now Bren esports are just such a powerhouse as a team and they need to be separated to really take them apart one by one yep SNK once again getting caught out oh dear Ooh, it could be a bit of a bait tactic. We'll have to. Waiting that. Uh, they are making the rotation down to backs. So they did manage to push this lane up fairly far, but you can see right now, Infamous just don't have what it takes to go for a full attempt on the turret as Kraken is now on the fold. And if they die doing so, you know it could really cost them a lot more. So right now, the team's going to be a, a, fear, uh, a bit of a stalemate for now until. They find Ben X5. Yep, they will be. This is the, the usual calm before the storm, but Brand Esports will not allow the calm to go on for too long. Maybe looking to go in. Yep, I, I'm sure Brand Esports trying to bait out that gauntlet from Arden. As soon as that's used, they know that that's their chance to fight. Guessing constantly trying to land the impales, but needs to be careful to not lead spaghetti towards them as he builds up those stacks and mr jim on the back line taking massive damage through and mr jim managed to scale up the gauntlet and just poke down chingy who had previously tried to dive onto them sync one using their own uh block to get out of there and they're going to be able to do so but whether they're going to go for the chase on spaghetti i don't think they can catch them out i mean spaghetti has his own sonic zoom snk has the vanguard to keep him out of danger but for that, I mean, it's a fairly even trade once again. Both these teams, if anything, Bren Esports slightly ahead in the gold lead, seeing at 35.9k, and Infamous slightly back at 34.3. So it's barely any difference at this point, and it just depends how the team fights break out. Yep, it will be down to how team fights break out, but I do understand where Ching is coming from or the set of Infamous is coming from. The 40% damage reduction that Grace offers with that Benediction. So whenever Grace Benediction in, she provides a directional shield of 40% in damage reduction for his and for her entire teammate. For her entire team at least. And I guess this is what that Spaghetti have to make use of and take advantage of. And it will be this damage reduction, but they will be taking Kraken now. And it will lay oblivious to the side oh of Infamous. My. Oh, there's going to be a flare coming. But it will gonna... be too late. Whitefoot comes out, and SNK in the middle of the fight doesn't have the gauntlet up for 